everybody. How's it going? I'm Gary Palmer Jr. You're you. Together, we are minting coins. We're getting together on this fine, fine Whiskey Wednesday. Welcome to the show. We are drinking. We are knowing things. We are talking about OpenSea. We are talking about ENS.Vision. We are talking about the Seaport Protocol. The world is changing, right? I don't think a lot of people realize this, but OpenSea knew a competitor was going to come. OpenSea knew they were going to get overtaken in every which way to Sunday, which is a lot of different ways to Sunday. And they disrupted themselves. They disrupted themselves with the Seaport protocol. People are building on it. ENS.Vision is building on it. OpenSea is going to be an aggregator. It's no longer going to be a simple, you know, one trick pony of a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're going to be talking about building ipfs websites you know there's you know also ipns but let's just say ipfs websites different decentralized content websites building web3 and when we have domain names to get to those web3 websites we have ens we have eth there's others as well you know you can do this with dot crypto you can do this with all the unstoppable domains i'm pretty sure you could do it with handshakes too honestly i haven't tried but i know for a fact there's some people that would like to show me but we can definitely do it with the, with the .eth. We're going to look at some examples of some people building on the .eth. And uh, we're going to be doing it with some friends of ours, some people we know, some people like we like, some people we trust, some people who are here right now, some people that are going to be here a little bit later in the show. But starting off, we have Rocket Rocket Emoji .eth, a.k.a. Luke the Dev. <laughs> What's up? Who are you? How are we doing? No, thank you for the for the introduction, the rocket rocket enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. I first off, like talking about the aggregation of OpenSea. I can't wait to get into that. I think that's a smart move on their play. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, but yeah, building and building on IPFS, publishing those to Dotties. I feel like over the last month, I've seen tons of new D websites come up and uh, it's it's really positive to see because it just it helps our ecosystem out in uh, every way possible. And yeah, I'm excited to get into some examples today. I'll throw a few out there later. But heck yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure having you. Pleasure having you. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, someone new, someone old. It's a uh, a previous face, but is it a new name? I don't know. My memory escapes me. Seven nine nine four dot eth. I like the double nines. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm excited to be here, Gary. And obviously with Rocket, Rocket Emoji, I asked them the same thing. How do you like, how do you say that? Is it just <laughs> Rocket? Is it Rocket, Rocket Emoji? But obviously, we know you're Gary. I'm Julio, E-A-H. Um, and I'm excited to be minting some coins today, you know, maybe minting some other things, right? Um, with all the things that we are going to be talking about. So just excited to be here. Um, let's get this conversation started. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for being here. Thanks for being on time. Some other people are oh, not. Would you turn that light we're going to we're going to we're going to scold them in a and in, when they're getting. No, that's not true. But what we are going to do is I'm going to thank everyone for showing up. And uh, I'm going to say if you haven't already, just take a look at mintingcoins.com. Then DM me on Twitter if Twitter ever decides to work again or get a hold of me somehow. And, uh, you know, let, let me know what you think about mintingcoins.com. It's, it's our community. It's our centerpiece. It's where we're coming together. It's where we have the members only community content. And, and this is, you know, really the main way that we are funding web three domains.com and web three domains.com is where you can get information and access to all sorts of things related to web three domains and your web three identity, your digital identity. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. You know, there's an article here already posted uh, about the ENS vision and OpenSea listings integration. Maybe we'll review that. And there's just a lot of uh, really interesting uh, pieces of update information. And we have a lot of things planned with web3domains.com and, you know, our independent writers really lifting up people, getting people, you know, uh, their, their content up and out there with their voices up and out there, you know, giving them a platform where, you know, they can say what it is that they got to say. And what's going to happen is that the bull market is going to be coming back. When the bull market comes back, then we're going to be flooded in with a lot of different voices, a lot of different people. 
And we're going to want to know who are the people that were here? Who are the people that showed up? Who are the people that had something to say, you know, way back in the day, you know, in 2023, when nobody was looking at this, when nobody was building on this. Uh, but now there's a lot of people building and uh, we're going to talk about it. Heck yeah. I did, uh, I did yeah. send you some uh, two D websites over Discord uh, just because I have my phone and stuff in different places. Just so you know. Yeah, I got that. And uh, cool. That's stuff you're building, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah stuff I'm working on for people. So cool. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that. So, uh, yeah, I guess we got like two sort of, uh, main topics, what, what we want to, you know, get to, and then there's other fun stuff that we can get to after that potentially. But the first thing is talking about what's going on with OpenSea and what's going on with ENS vision, because OpenSea, right. As I mentioned in the intro, they're disrupting themselves with this new thing called the Seaport protocol. So my first question to either one of you, have you heard of the Seaport protocol? Have you, you guys know about Seaport at all? I've, I've heard about it, but I'll let the dev go first. Oh man. I thought you were going to spit some bars for us. So yeah, uh, Seaport's interesting. Um, it's been out there for a while. It's been testing and it's basically, um, what OpenSea has been doing is testing kind of these uh, signatures where what happens is you don't pay it's a gasless signature and this is basically their big thing with seaport but it's it goes much further than that that's just the use case that we see right now is when you're listing an item or listing other things you'll notice that um, over the past month you've been getting gasless listings it's all held um, on chain so it, it's a it's a big move forward and it's good and like you said uh, the aggregation that comes with it is only going to get better because now, since they're allowing other other communities like Enes, to, uh, Enes Vision and all these other ones to use Seaport as well in the same way to aggregate, it's a, it's a game changer. Yeah, so, and yeah, exactly. So it's, and, and so Seaport's like this is protocol, right? Is Right, mm -hmm. it's okay to call Seaport a protocol. It's a protocol yeah. that OpenSea has sort of led the initiative on, that you know has its own what C, uh, OpenSea is describing as the ecosystem, mm -hmm. and everyone anyone can tap into Seaport. And uh, what's going on as of yesterday is that starting yesterday, mm -hmm. they be, they began some programs between OpenSea and ENS Vision, uh, in addition to you know some other marketplaces. And so now they're going to have aggregate listings. So Seaport is just like going to be a protocol where anyone's going to be able to buy and sell NFTs. <clears throat> so every single marketplace can just tap into Seaport and they could all have their own unique features, their own unique, mm -hmm. you know, benefits, their own unique selling points for better or for worse. And so OpenSea is disrupting themselves. And just go, I mean, if I can go into this, you know, real quick, the quick refresher. Seaport is the open source protocol for safely and efficiently buying and selling NFTs. And OpenSea is saying that it's the only protocol specifically built to power the NFT ecosystem. Um, yeah, so it's a big deal. And now they're, now they're basically, they have a pilot program between not this, using the Seaport protocol between OpenSea and ENS Vision. And they're going to be, you know, aggregating. So the same, you know, people can use those different platforms uh, to, to purchase from, you know, essentially competing platforms. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. huge. Um, I think especially for ENS, I, I can't, I can't speak to the, speak to the technology side. I'm not much of a dev. Um, but I know that from a um, selling standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, you know, I, I think it'll bring a lot of attention to um, ENS and to vision. And I think it'll help also 
um, facilitate selling and buying in, in, in this market um, with all the data uh, aggregation and the listings aggregation that's going to happen now. So I think this is overall bullish um, for ENS as an ecosystem. Yeah, gosh, my take on it is the exactly same way. Just it's going to help ENS in so many ways. And of course, we all love ENS uh, more than more than potentially other people do. But um, it gets more eyes, like you said. That means like the categories that we see on ENS Vision are going to be more readily available to more eyes. Um, just the chance to actually have uh, more offers on domains, more people actually being like, oh, like these are these are actually a thing. They work. You can build on them. People are actually using these to do stuff. Like it's a uh, seaport brings a whole new set of eyes to ENS completely. Like thousands on thousands of eyes. So good. Thousands of eyes and thousands of eyes because anybody is gonna any, any marketplace that comes on a scene is gonna be able to build on seaport. And mm -hmm. um. So, you know, th th there could be a marketplace that's not built yet. There could be an existing marketplace. Guys, there could be Facebook, right? Facebook, uh, uh, ENS, uh, ENS Vision, uh, I Instagram. <laughs> um, what do we got? Reddit, you know, you name mm -hmm. it. Twitter. Twitter could build using the Seaport protocol to instantly buy and sell NFTs. And when they tap into that protocol, uh, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram would be able to buy and sell NFTs that are on OpenSea or Rarible or Looks Rare or ENS Vision, because you know, in case you know, for whichever ones are using the protocol. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. Like a Web two company giant could could just come in completely and partner with OpenSea simply by tapping into this protocol, because that's the power of different protocols like Chainlink, like uh ave you know like ens like uh seaport yeah cheers good way to think about it and like you said it's we were they're waiting i would think that facebook and instagram and all those twitter we're waiting for a more practical way uh to enter that that's space and seaport does that dramatically um i mainly refer back to their like the gasless transactions for listing and stuff like that um it just takes out so many fees that we had previously like when gosh 2021 when gas fees we were paying a hundred dollars just to you know register a domain now that's like obviously we're gonna we're gonna pay with the gas fee but if somebody were to list that domain or list something like it's it's completely free and i think that because it's more practical to use we're going to see Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, one of them take the jump onto it already. And just like we got, what is that blur marketplace? That's an aggregator um, in a way. Like I props to them. Cause I really think they help speed up <laughs> open seas progress in terms of seaport uh, because they've been working on seaport for a long time, but I do know that they probably wanted to get that thing just perfect before they release any sort of it. Looks like Twitter's back up. Yeah, it's it's been up for for a minute. <clears throat> so again, I I see everyone. I I don't know what do you guys think on this take, but is like OpenSea obviously has had most of the market share since the inception of NFTs, and you could view this as right, like they could be handing the keys over to a Web two company, like Gary mentioned. They could just come in. And like suddenly take over do you guys view it as like open c is kind of releasing part of their market share or this is a bigger play in their mind that they're going to get more market share after doing something like this or just your thoughts what do you guys think i i think that i mean i first of all I have not done enough research to really know. And uh, a lot of what, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of I'm saying is w without knowing all the pieces, you know, on my part is speculation. But the way that I see it is that if there's a protocol, uh, like a real protocol that's open and interoperable, 
that anybody can work together to build on top of that protocol, just like anybody can come in and build mm -hmm. on top of, you know, chain link, anyone can come in and build on top of ENS, you know, like anything that's really web three, no matter what size the community, someone can come in and they can help build, you know, on that open, open source project. Right. And, uh, if it's not, you know, I don't know if it's not open source, then, then it's sort of like gate kept, you know, so ENS is open source. A lot of web three stuff is open source. Um, yeah, so I'm assuming that, you know, the C, right? So if, if you could build a protocol and if you can uh, reach a critical mass of the number of people who use that protocol, then, you know, you're creating a network effect. And if you're a part of that wave, if you're a big player in that space, if you're an early adopter, then all of that is in your favor, right? Because the, the opposite of that is so you, someone comes along and disrupts you. Right. It's like really hard to disrupt yourself. So if someone comes along and like, you know, Instagram just says, hey, we're a marketplace or hey, we're going to create our own protocol. And now OpenSea doesn't get any say in how that gets created. OpenSea doesn't, you know what I mean? And so I, I think it's just a smarter play to sort of open source yourself and open source your technology and create a larger pool of, of people who are participating as opposed to creating, you know, systems that are closed off. Yeah. So you think, um, so yeah, so I see that they, they're doing it the web three way, right? They're, they're going the decentralized route, open source. And obviously I think in the, in the community, we like participate in most people will view it as a good thing. Right. So I think that'll bring good press, even though they're also helping other people kind of build their own marketplaces to compete with them in a sense. But, um, yeah. So OpenSea is saying that the that the C port is open source inherently decentralized. I don't know what that means, but that's what they're saying. Inherently decentralized. <clears throat> inherently decentralized because it's open sourced. All right. Doesn't uh, Instagram? Don't they already have some sort of marketplace already built? I remember yeah, right. every every everybody does, and most of them are building it on Polygon. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this seaport this, this works protocol. with Polygon. Yeah, I was, go, I was about to say yeah. this protocol. Like, there's just like ninety nine point nine 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 percent chance it's blockchain agnostic. Yeah, it, it's it, not, it, it probably is. needs to be EMV compatible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're saying it's an open source protocol and then uh, it, it allows uh, us to quickly build new features that were previously impossible, mm -hmm. like making collection office uh, offers and um, attribute offers, offers on a group with specific attributes, um, you know, by volume or yeah. collection. So so you could so anybody can build a marketplace that that, you know, allows them allows them to to really customize something really really cool and uh speaking of people that customize things that are really <laughs> really cool what's up Ada? hey guys what's going on hey yo welcome welcome Ada. yeah good to see you guys how's it going going well going well yeah it's it's good to see you i love i love what you're building i was reading into your stuff a little bit more and it's it's quite impressive i look up to it for sure thank you yeah thank you i you got your whiskey I... <laughs> all right yes yes i am trying the new whiskey so i, ha I i'm doing this thing this year where right. i'm gonna try anywhere from like 12 to 24 new whiskeys i don't know how quickly I go through them. That's why I'm saying like 12 to 24, one or two mm. bottles a month. But I'm going to like research them to see what's cool and special about them. So today I have Rabbit Hole. Okay. And what's and so Is that a Kentucky whiskey? It is a Kentucky whiskey. Yeah. It's made in Kentucky. And what's so super special and exciting about it, it is made by a couple 
and their story is really exciting. So she got really, really into the whiskey and he wasn't. And so she pulled him in to open the distillery and came up with a name. And together they went down the rabbit hole of whiskey making. And uh, I mean, now they're, you know, they're crushing it. So I haven't tried, I haven't even taken a sip yet, but this is like my adventure begins into the world of whiskey. I'm going to not only try different whiskeys, but I'm going to like dive in and really, really learn love way it. more than I know about whiskey. Love it. Love it. So yeah. I'm, what I'm hearing is you guys are starting a distillery here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what yeah. I'm hearing is that I'm getting pulled into the whiskey business. Yeah. <laughs> so That's what I heard too. <laughs> So in the early, early days, when we started Minting Coins live show, mm -hmm. um, so not like back, back in 2017, I was talking with Thread Girl and uh, from very early shows, I mean, it was like one of the first week or something, I went and got Whiskey Women That Ease. So mm. I have a brand. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but something's <laughs> definitely going to come. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm yeah. excited. I want to do that too. I, I don't have a very much vocabulary in my whiskey, but we're getting there. Yeah, I, I I have to say it's only been like the last, I don't know, maybe five years mm -hmm. that I've really like developed a taste for it. Nice. Got to get on the Canadian whiskey. That stuff. All right. Very good. 24 whiskeys a year, I think we could fit in a couple of Canadian whiskeys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is Japanese whiskey that I really want to oh. try. Yeah, I've heard amazing, amazing things. Mm -hmm. So I'll be sharing my whiskey journey as a part of our Web3 and ENS journey because, you know, it is Whiskey Wednesday and we're yeah. drinking whiskey and we're talking about Web3. So, you know, it all goes together. Awesome. You guys are making me feel bad. I didn't bring a whiskey. I'm, I'm, I have, I have my Gatorade, but um, <laughs> I'm, it's okay. I'm texting, I'm texting that. my wife right now, <laughs> like, hey, do you have a whiskey down there? You could bring me up. <laughs> Help bring whiskey. See if that works. She's, she's the whiskey drinker in our family, but um, yeah. you know, I might got, get that acquired taste like out of later in life yeah you know? i mm -hmm. i have been trying to get gary into whiskey and it's been very <laughs> very recently i mean as as the whiskey show like i was like you at least have to like try it for the whiskey wednesday <laughs> oh so that was you that implemented that yeah hell yeah okay okay oh yeah I'm makes a whiskey sense speaker now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, super excited. Uh, yeah, so I'm super excited about that. Ada, super excited about the Whiskey Wednesday brand. And uh, super excited to see what comes of that and all the doors and opportunities that opens up with the whiskey culture because there's a couple things I know about the whiskey culture. And the, I know the whiskey culture has good whiskey. I know the whiskey culture has good music. I know the whiskey culture has good culture. Yeah. And with you, with you adding, deep. To it, yeah. Super cool. Yeah, and maybe one day we'll get that whiskey island up in the uh, up in New York. Yeah. Yeah, we'll add it. We'll be a, be a business yeah. expense. We'll do. We'll turn into a studio. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. Turn into a studio. We'll invite people out. Hundred percent. Half crypto, half. Yeah, it is available. My my dream is to yes to acquire whiskey a whiskey island, and in the summer bring the crypto community together. You know, handpicked because a lot of the crypto community likes to like does the whole like poke the beast nest with the stick. I'm not into that. No, no, no. We're gonna like get together and we're gonna build an epic community and we're all gonna work together. And we're gonna you know build epic shit together and that uh, we're gonna drink whiskey and we're gonna do it all in whiskey island that's uh that's my that's where i'm going so you know check in yeah. with me like once a year to see how it's going well, but dear. you know i mean gary v wants to buy the jets and uh 
I want to buy the whiskey I want. I mean, why? <laughs> And yeah, like works. I said, that's just a business expense. We we just got to get yeah. to a certain level and then just uh, use use it for a conference. <laughs> we'll, have like, we'll have like a conference there. That would be awesome. Uh, cool. Well, all right. you know, one of the ways we're going to get there Seven. is uh, <laughs> is uh, figuring figuring this shit out because there's just so much happening so quick, and I think a lot of people aren't paying attention because a lot of people don't have the money or they don't have the, you know, they don't have the funds. They, um, are sort of, uh, dismayed. I think people are dismayed by the world. I think the economy, I think crypto people are feeling like shit. Uh, they're feeling the bull market. I, I don't even think, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but, um, I don't even think we're at the, you know, part where people are I, like, I'm not seeing the tweets about, other people tweeting about, Hey guys, here's a suicide hotline, right? I'm not seeing it get like really, really bad for people yet. And I, I still think that there's going to be like, you know, bad things to come before it gets better, but <coughs> people aren't paying attention, you know, because of all those things, because of the fear of the market going down, because of the fear of like politics in the world, people aren't paying attention. And it's like now that a lot of people that are that, you know, have ADHD or ADD or anxiety or whatever, you know, people that understand web three people who are builders, they're building, right? It's like, they're showing up every day. They're, they're listening. They're taking in information and a percentage of those people are putting it all together, you know, and a percentage of those people are people like OpenSea. a percentage of those people are people like ENS vision. And kind of like we're talking about with the uh, Seaport protocol, you know, they're like the first movers, the first shakers who are taking advantage of, of this, you know, new situation. And uh, yeah, ENS Vision has like their their uh, post on Medium about the cross listing on OpenSea, which is the game changer for buyers and sellers. I think what people are most excited about is that they, you know, the way this works, people are going to be able to list their ENS names through, you know, ENS vision. And I'm not sure, you know, people are going to be able to list their names through OpenSea too. But when people buy their names through ENS vision, they're not going to pay the 2.5 from OpenSea. They're going to pay the 1.5 from ENS vision. So you're going to get a bigger audience, bigger reach. And you're still going to, you know, it seems like you're going to pay the, the smaller fee. I mean, there, there's still a lot of details I got to figure out. Yeah. That also comes into play that it could be a move then for ENS Vision on that front is, like you said, turning it more so. Like, obviously, they're, they're selected with their ENS domains, but if they were to turn into something more of uh, selling NFTs on the side, there again, you're paying the one... 1.5% fee versus the 2.5% fee on OpenSea. And uh, yeah, it just goes to show that I'm, I'm excited. We're going to see a lot more marketplaces, I believe, uh, come into the picture. And uh, it's just better when there's more competitors. Um, it drives competition and it just makes people produce better products. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So can, can you guys imagine like what's what's stopping GoDaddy from tapping? Like I was talking about things. What was I talking about? I said uh, Instagram and, and Twitter. What's stopping GoDaddy from integrating Seaport protocol and selling all the names that are on ENS Vision and all the names that are on OpenSea and selling all those .eth names on GoDaddy.com? What's stopping GoDaddy to have signed with Ethereum with EIP 4361 and letting people log in with their wallet and purchase ENS names through the GoDaddy interface using Seaport? Probably Go Mommy. <laughs> it's always a woman behind all the big decisions, you know? Yeah, well, she, she's good. I know she's going to tell GoDaddy. She's going to tell GoDaddy we got to be tapping in the Seaport protocol. And th like, think about it, like GoDaddy could launch in the Web3. GoDaddy could launch in the Web3 using signing with Ethereum, 
which is EIP 4361. They could launch into Web3 using the Seaport protocol. And, and instead of launching, they, they could do it without those things and they could launch with zero names or they could launch with signing with Ethereum and Seaport protocol. And they can launch with every single name listed on their platform day one. It's just, it just makes sense. That's like going to happen, right? I'm calling it. GoDaddy's going to use Seaport and instantly be able to sell every single name that exists. Who wants to bet against me? <laughs> I'm not making bets right now, but yeah, it's a, uh, I, I just honestly, I think it's going to be amazing for the space. And I know I've said it multiple times before, but it's uh it's progress and to see it being built when everything's down and it's uh I, I don't know i feel like there's more authenticity behind it and then versus trying to maybe get cash grab or find ways to you know get ready but um it's it's a good move on their part of course they had their rivals like blur that i owed complete aggregator on their end Although I think they, I think they use some attributes from Seaport themselves, if I believe. So there again, it's just, um, and we don't know truly. It could be a bigger market share play that you know they're trying to make in some way, shape, or form. And um, but either way, it, it's good for the communities, the smaller communities uh, like ENS. I shouldn't say small; it's huge. But at the same time, in retrospect. I think what, what continues to be a big roadblock for people unless they spend the time to research to what it takes, it's very, very, very cumbersome for most people that haven't been part of Web3 to actually get into Web3. And I mean, thinking from somebody who's used to going to GoDaddy and if you already have an account on, Go on GoDaddy, like your credit card is stored, you basically just say, click at the cart, check out, boom, <coughs> it is done. Mm -hmm. And the process, the user experience is so seamless. And if you're a new person and you're like, okay, I'm going to go to ENS Vision and purchase the domain. I mean, just think about it, all the steps that you have to do. It's, it's, it's. It's really mind boggling. Like for us, it's easy because you have it set up. Like you have wallet set up, you have ETH on your wallet, you've used it a million times, you plug it in. But if you're a new person to go through that entire process, I think that is currently the biggest block to adoption. Is because when I think about it, when we were in the early days of the internet, like we were used to jumping through a lot of hoops, but that was, that was just the status quo. Like you literally had to go to the bank and get the money out. You literally had to write checks and then wait for those checks to get mailed before somebody could deposit them. The early days of eBay, like you literally would mail somebody a check <laughs> and there were listings on eBay that didn't even have photos. They were just like descriptions of what you were buying, which is crazy. I mean, imagine buying Jeez. something that you can't even see. It's described and then you get it and you're like, what yeah, the hell? It sounds like, like my uh, loot and gear NFTs. Yeah, sure. 100%. <laughs> like you're like, I'm buying in the dark. And then you have to send them a check. So it takes yeah. like two weeks for the check to arrive. But but the mentality, what I'm trying, the point yeah. I'm trying to make, we were used to things taking longer. There was no instant messages. You had to call somebody if you wanted to hang out with your friends in the early days and they happened to be online. Like that phone call was not going through. The line was busy. Like you couldn't even use the internet and a phone at the same time. So the mentality was like, you just wait. Like life just... Every, every task they do in life takes longer. And then we arrived at this instant having everything that you want in your pocket. And it's very difficult to now go back to places where you don't have that. I mean, imagine driving your car and then for some reason your car goes away and you happen to live in a city that has terrible transportation. And imagine like going back to trying to figure out like what it takes for you to like go and meet your friends at a restaurant or what it takes for you to even go grocery shopping and figure out bus schedules and realize that the buses are late or don't show up. It's very difficult to go backwards. And, and I think until we get those pieces buttoned up, 
where the security can happen, but also the user experience is seamless. I don't think we're going to see that adoption curve like jump up. Like what we want to see is the exponential growth. And I think what we're going to kind of continue to see, it's like it's going to grow, but it's like, you know, small speed. It's like to do, to do, to do, to do. Well, ex exponential growth comes from uh, so. So, yeah, so there's multiple. So, ex so exponential growth comes from multiple S curves. And so you have these S curves where, you know, like like la 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 la. There's a, num num a number of people who are involved. And then it swoops up with a whole new group of people that, that get involved. And then it's la, 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 la. And then there's another S curve where it swoops up. And so you get these multiple S curves where there's like more and more people. And then it hits this catalyst where everyone's jumped in. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we you know, we forget how like sh short, you know, how, how, how like early we all are just because it, because how quickly everything is moving. But we are like incredibly early, right? And so, um, like I don't know, like we got involved kind of significantly in you know 2017 or so. And when we got involved in 2017, like we felt like we were late. Um, and then everything changed very, very quickly in 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 the year 2017. You know, with the th with Ethereum essentially going from seven dollars to you know 70 to 700 to 1,400. Mm -hmm. uh, everything and. and basically yeah that was like the year of like the icos or lots of icos and lots of miners and lots of forking you know like forking became very big oh, yeah. icos became very big and then then after the icos you know there was the nfts and so that was one s curve and that was another s curve and then there's another s curve and the ens names are barely you know those are like s curves inside s curves right and um th i think the real question you know, when I listen to, to what you're talking about, Ada, is, you know, with all these S curves that are on this hockey stick of adoption, what are going to be the points that are tipping points? What are going to be the points that aren't just S curves, which are needed? Lots of little S curves are needed. But what are going to be the tipping points, which are like culturally significant in a way that the, that the media doesn't like use against us, like the FTX. Like FTX is a, is a, is a cultural tipping point for sure, but it's a negative tipping point. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's going to be events that make people realize more and more, wow, we really need Bitcoin. Wow, we really need the Ethereum, you know, supercomputer. Wow, we really need an ENS domain name for a payment address and a blog website and an identity. And these tipping points, you're going to just make it like night and day. They're going to be like, no, crypto is a, a human right. Open source crypto cryptography is a fundamental basic human right. And and so I'm just interested, what are those tipping points going to be that resonate with everybody? Because they've been happening on a small scale, right? With little countries like um, Ukraine or, you know, and people live in Ukraine and Bitcoin has really been helping, you know, refugees. Or some of these smaller countries, like you know, you know, Turkey or or uh, you know Georgia or, or Greece or you know these South American countries, uh, all over South America where the currency is devaluing, you know, like these small pockets of people, they're recognizing, oh my goodness, I I really need this cryptocurrency, I really need this Bitcoin, and you know, at a large scale, like mm -hmm. folks in America, we're not recognizing like that the water is getting warmer, that everything is getting hotter, that things are getting more difficult. It's, it's like, it's like, oh, geez, guys, eggs are like $10 a carton. You know, it's getting hot in here. And it's not going to be too long where people recognize that these, these little problems, like, like what are these major tipping points where people are going to realize that the significance? And then it's going to be really interesting to see how businesses and organizations capitalize on that new attention that comes in from those, major major of think about it like we can't predict those major events that are going to happen but they're going to happen and those folks are going to come in I mean, that's the whole premise of what we're doing at minting coins and web3 domains is making it so when people do those google searches our content is coming up when they go to those youtube searches this content is coming up because all those that flood of people guys we are like a minority inside a minority and all those people are coming they're coming guys there's gonna be so much to handle we are not ready yeah 
It's Damn crazy. Questions. It is pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, what and you got and, on that seven. Go and going it. back to what Otto was saying about the um, how easy or how hard it is or how hard compared to Vision would be to OpenSea. Um, you know, is it very difficult to implement that what OpenSea has that you can buy with crypto, like, or sorry, buy with a credit card? Um, you know, I think for mass adoption, that would be one of the easier solutions, maybe, and like, uh, like having like a PayPal or a Cash App or just a credit card that you can upload and directly into your wallet. And then from there, you can just buy because you have the ETH in your account. Um, um, it's difficult, but yeah, I, I would assume maybe that would be something easier. And currently, I think you could even um, create a profile on on OpenSea and you can do that and not even have to use it with them. So you could potentially use it to buy from these other listings on different websites if they're cheaper. But to your point, Ada, is it's a little harder. And I remember seeing this documentary and it was talking about Amazon and how everyone's used to like you know, before you had to send a check or you Netflix, you had to, you know, request it. It came via mail, you know, all these things. And now, like, you want everything now. Like, um, I feel like sometimes I go on Amazon, I have Prime. And if it it's not on Prime, I'm not going to get it. If it doesn't arrive tomorrow, I won't order it. <laughs> and it's like, literally, this documentary is like, lunch. Amazon now. Like, I want it now. Like, I want to order it and I want it to appear in my hand. That's how people want it. So if you make them like wait a couple of days, you know, the, the money like in Coinbase, sometimes it has to clear a couple of days. Yeah. Um, some people have withdrawal limits, stuff like that. So it, it makes it harder for people that want things now to get it done now. And they maybe just they just kind of go away. So I know that that might be one of the tipping points once we get easier ways to onboard or on ramp that money um, from fiat money into crypto. Yeah. Yeah, I often think about it, you know, at, at what point, like at what point and, and, and what are we giving up at, at those points? Like if we go fully into, you know, credit cards and centralization, then is it still what we, is it still in alignment with the decentralized vision that we have had, you know? And so these are some really, really big questions. And I think, um you know, uh, censorship was is kind of like another you know big questions around that, and um, you know what 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 can we do and what we cannot do right in in these environments, and and do we have the capacity to self censor? Because I think if everything's running smoothly, there's no need for regulations. Like I, the regulations are always a response of something that happens right so ftx blows up and all this money gets stolen and then it's like oh this is a perfect time to scream regulations because you know we have learned from our mistakes that we cannot be trusted as as humanity and so i think that this is really these are some really really big fundamental questions that i always go back to when google first started like they didn't have a clue how they're going to get monetized. It was a, a group of visionaries and programmers that created this incredible search engine that was way better than anything that was currently on the market. And, you know, they didn't they didn't have the plans to take over the world like they couldn't. I don't know, maybe they did. Maybe it was like the Whiskey Island kind of, you know, buying the jets, maybe. But my guess is that they didn't, and it was used to be written in their, um, you know, mission, vision, who we are, don't be evil. Like, they, because they looked around and they're like, we're not going to be like one of those big companies that are destroying the world. And very quickly, right? Like once they got funding, then you are responsible to the investors. And I think that we want to grow these companies. Like I, I want to see ENS Vision succeed. Like I want to see all of these companies succeed. But at certain point, is you know, there's this trade-off that once you start taking more and more external capital, then the people who might not be aligned with the original vision have more and more power, or you have more pressure as the owner to make certain decisions. 
And so I always say, you know, at what point the, the tipping point goes too far and we've lost what the, 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 the vision of decentralization was all about. And I like I think about that question all the time, like how do we move forward and actually use this amazing technology to better the world and not allow it to be hijacked and make mm -hmm. the world even worse? Because it's very easy to see that the technology is amazing. Like nobody's ever arguing technology. Like I think that everybody's seeing the technology is the future, but all the companies want to take the technology and centralize it. Right. So how realistic is like, I mean, 100% decentralization that I don't think will ever happen. What is an acceptable number, you right. know, to everyone? Because like some companies might be like, oh, 10% is good, 20%, 50. What do like us? I, I think a lot of us are, you know, toward the higher end, like we want 75% plus. Yeah. How realistic is that, Ada and, and everyone else? Like, how realistic is it? Because I feel like in order to get mass adoption, we're going to have to accept that the masses will not adopt it as we want to adopt it, yeah. right? Because we all can't be developers. We all can't be like the forward thinkers or the decentralized minds that we are. There's going to be a lot of people that will need to join, and it's going to help us in our journey. Um but how realistic is it? Like, what percentage are you thinking? Like, I I really don't have a question. Like, I wish that I was like, okay, if we go to like, you know, forty eight percent, then that's just it. That's gonna tip the scales, you know. But if we keep it at like forty seven point, you know, nine nine nine, we're we're barely there. But it's like, you know, we're, we're okay. I, I th and I think that that's going to change. I think that that's going to change because I think what pushes the decentralization forward is you have the community and then you also have the, you know, the, the companies who are innovating with the, with the technology, because if you have a community, but then you don't have anything for the community to use, right. Then you don't have decentralization. So from very early on, the the builders were like how do we build on this even from the very very early days of bitcoin it was like how do we build exchanges right how do we make more coins because one isn't enough like how do we build different protocols how do we create more chains how do we link those chains right and then it's like how do we create more nft projects how do we engage more community and and so i think the building is really the cornerstone because that's what engages everybody you know but but and so that's why i say it's like partially driven by the community and partially driven by the companies and i i look at it like okay if the companies get to a point where they're where they start becoming more centralized and the community sort of rebels that isn't enough because then you're going to have this whole other wave of adoption that's going to come that will not know the history. We just look at like, oh, this is the awesome new shiny thing that I can just take and incorporate with everything else without knowing anything. And it will go on. And then maybe the community would just get disheartened and just be like, okay, the world is falling apart and I'm just like never, ever, ever building anything great. Or they'll just accept it. And I think that all of these are kind of open ended questions, meaning like I, I don't have answer because there's so many moving pieces and it can go so many ways. And I wish that I was like, I am going to to, you know, fight and it's like decentralize or die. And I am definitely way more on a decentralization part like I want to constantly remember like where did we come from and why did it start and what was it in response to to, pr to preserve like why this movement is even here so we can focus more on that and not like what's the next shiny dns or nft or flip or grail or any you know any of those things but i think that 
you know, as humanity, like we want like input and new things. And it's very hard as we have seen through, through history, it's very hard to organize people around an idea unless there's no other choice. So meaning if you are in a country where things get so bad, that there's no other choice than to organize and fight for something that you believe in. But I think that if things are going really well, it's very hard to have that that type of conviction. And I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to sound totally like a Debbie Downer because it does sound like, oh, there's no hope. Like I definitely think there's hope and I think something amazing is going to come out of it. And I think we don't even know what that's going to look like yet. Yeah. There's a there's a lot to unfold and like you said how how we use it and how people build on it is going to determine literally how the world views it like unfortunately the FTX thing big thing that's that sucks cuz now there's no crypto commercials in the Super Bowl. That's banned. That was that did a lot like if you think about it Coinbase last year with their Super Bowl commercial that QR code that went on a screen, it was genius. You had so many people look into it after that. And that it's just the creative minds that were there for those that aren't there anymore. And then, yeah, it's uh, tough. Also to kind of point off, uh, um, gosh, Julio's, uh, almost forgot your name there, sorry. Julio's uh, have many names, there. don't worry. I do believe... <laughs> I do believe PayPal is actually messing around with a bunch of Ethereum transactions in terms of like you being able to use your card and purchase uh, stuff um, that it costs ETH, but using your card, that being NFTs. So it's coming kind of like OpenSea and you're saying now you could use the cards. And then um, with the Seaport, that also means that essentially uh, ENS domains could be potentially purchased with credit cards now through Seaport, which is, that's big. That that could bring a lot of people in, into where we're looking. But yeah, back back to you, Ada, and stuff like that. Um, it's how we treat it and how we build and the reputation that we have for the things that we are building is so important. And it sucks to see when things kind of get torn apart by bad actors because you're going to have bad actors everywhere. But um we can rebuild from everything and get it going uh, i still have hope like you said it just it makes us more early honestly push people out makes us a little, a little more early it's like sometimes i i mean secretly or publicly i wish the bad actors stayed in the in the web 2 realm um so that you know they get bad rep and and, and we look even better but it hurts when there's bad actors in our space it just we're not there yet so it, it just brings us back a little bit more but yeah it's very interesting and i love speculating that's why i asked the question ada because uh, i think i think i i i'm i'm with you like i want full decentralization i mean there has to be some of it right i mean it's a scale it's not a absolute anything um but you know i i'm also realistic i'm like okay i have ens i have nfts i'm an educator so like I know the people I'm targeting. Um, am I going to be able to reach everything that I want if you know there's not more mass adoption and people that are not even you know decentralization maxis? And, and I'm trying to be realistic about it. And I'm like, okay, we need a lot of those people too. So you know, just like to pose that question because it's obviously it doesn't have a yes or no answer. But it's a spectrum. It's a, it's a spectrum and um you know like to to have this conversation is kind of like a like an into like an intellectual conversation it's kind of um it's kind of like something you would like when i think about it it's like something i i think about in like a university setting because you got to be really deliberate about understanding what is the question you're asking and you have to be really deliberate well, understanding that there's many different answers depending on how you slice the question. And so with each of these blockchain systems like Bitcoin or Ethereum or ENS, mm -hmm. there's, for, first of all, there's multiple different constituents, right? 
a constituent or a constituency is a group of people. It's a group of like-minded people that have a stake inside of a system, right? So when you're a politician, you might have like the farmer constituency and you might have the, the, you know, the, the gun owner constituency and you might have the healthcare, you know, people that care about, you know, like the people that, and so with crypto, uh, you know, with that you, you know, with Bitcoin, you have the miners, their constituency, you have the developers, their constituency, you have the node operators, right? The people who are actually running the node, deciding what software is being run. They're, they're a constitu constituency. So you have the miners, developers, node operators. You, you have the, like the, the Bitcoin holders because they're buying and selling the coin. You know, they're a constituency. So there's multiple constituencies and they all have different levels of power. Um, and then not only, you know, they, they, it's better if those constituencies work together, right? It's like the miners don't need the developers and they don't need the node operators, except they do. Right. And the node operators, node operators don't need the miners, except they do. Right. It's like, no one needs anybody except, except kind of you do. Um, and then, and then each of those different constituencies, they all have different vector attacks. They all have different ways to be infiltrated or to be, you know, um, coerced or to be, you know, pressured to, to make a decision or to be tricked to make a decision, uh, either, you know, human trickery, like social engineering, uh, or, or, you know, algorithmically right through, through a system. And, um, you know, and then there's like, you, then you could forget all of that. And then you could just think, well, you know, like I was just reading today that they're going to be using this FTX thing to create, you know, the, the, uh, um, the OCC, which is the United States office of the currency controller, as well as the SEC, right? Security and exchange mm. right, commission. Um, like those two organizations are about to put out some draconian laws to, to really, you know, essentially make cryptocurrency illegal. We're seeing major attacks on cryptocurrency today right in the past days the past weeks through banking and through you know like different sorts of uh, banking regulation we're seeing finance being shut out of uh you know uh swift processing under a hundred thousand dollars if not everything we're seeing kraken uh being investigated which is a you know a very up and up it's like you know right up there with coinbase and up and up we're seeing coinbase face regulation you know and they just already paid like a lot of money for some some things that you know may or may not have been bs um and so we see lots of attacks coming in and coming down on this industry right and that that's that's an attack and that's an attack on a constituency right the constituency of the consumers the constituency of the builders you know some constituencies of miners or stakers but you know, all of that regulation ultimately doesn't shut down the system at the same time, right? All that regulation, you know, all that attacking is just showing the system, showing the decentralized blockchain machine what's weak, what's centralized, what's low hanging fruit, what's being attacked, what's being tested, right? Where are people getting hurt? Where is the system not functioning? And then it's going to shift right it's going to it's going to have an equal but opposite reaction most likely using algorithmic cryptographic code people process infrastructure that allows people to articulate their feelings or thoughts or desires through money or through messages through freedom of expression or freedom of exchange using this web 0 plus web 1 plus web 2 plus web 3 technology you know, and it's it, it's simple, right? If like exchanges become illegal, there's still going to be Uniswap. Money is going to be money. Life will find a way. Yeah, it's definitely not going away. <laughs> it's definitely not going away. And if you think about it, a lot of these things, actually, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but a good majority of these troubles that we're having is in regards to how the United States views the the uh, web 3 movement um 
if we look at other countries, a lot of other countries are very much experimenting with it. We got the countries in South America using it as like an actual form of payment for salary. We got the countries in the in the Arab area that are literally like building full metaverses, making huge partnerships and spending billions of dollars to like get that technology so they can be like the home and the host of it. Um, again, like like all and you guys know, I feel like the U.S. is uh, kind of in it. They want they want they missed out. They really did. They missed out on the first initial moves and, you know, they're trying to get their portion of it. And that, unfortunately, by getting their portion of it is hurting the the movement and hurting, I guess, citizens in that route of the United States. That's my personal opinion on that. But oh, yeah, the, the genie is out of the toothpaste bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, the out of the and the cast out of the And the cat is out of the Definitely Don't you guys think they're the trying to protect model. the the consumers, the investors, the U.S. citizens, the taxpayers? They're not trying to protect yeah. us. Well, by us, if you mean us, if, if you if you're equating us as U.S. dollars, and you that think cool. it's to protect uh, you know U.S. dollars, then yeah. But yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> the, the cur cur currency is is you know, th there's going to be currency wars. There's going to be the they fight you stage. You know the dollar is not going to go down without a fight. The dollar <clears> should be compared to another currency. I don't want to get into the history of Iraq and and Libya and and all these places. I shouldn't be saying these words on a live stream uh, that had you know you know interest in, in creating currency systems, mm -hmm. but you know it's it's um, something that the United States is going to fight against, right? And it's it's really interesting because when you look at um you know the the technology from a technological perspective from a currency perspective but you can separate that and look at it the technology from a creator perspective from an mm -hmm. art perspective yeah exactly. and so people like like people were really like business people were really worried about bitcoin and cryptocurrency when it was just money and they were just seeing it as money competing with the us dollar even though they, it had like really appealing aspects to it. But once people realize that you can create content, that you can create IP, that you can create commerce mm -hmm. using, uh, you know, blockchain tech, web two technology, blockchain technology, NFTs, that you can create IPFS websites, that you can create, you know, buy now buttons on IPFS websites. And, and now people like Gary V aren't looking at this like a currency uh, play. They're looking at it like an IP play, intellectual mm -hmm. property. Yeah. They're looking at it like content. And they're recognizing that there's, there's content is not going, or this the content, the content's not going away. The intellectual property is not going away. The protocols aren't going away. And there might be bridges. And United States can, can say whatever they want about Bitcoin. They can say whatever they want about Ethereum. But they're gonna have to like allow people to, to exchange monkey pictures because that's how people make money. Yeah. yeah there, I, there was a section for that on TurboTax this year. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy. There is a new technology. Well, I shouldn't say a new technology. It's been here. Um, that's kind of interesting. And I I like full disclosure, I I have it, I bought into it. Um, but it started in Estonia. And it started as a digital residency. Now you probably know where I'm going to go with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they don't—they didn't build it on the blockchain or anything like that. It was just a digital residency, so you get benefits to um, building businesses, investing, and stuff like that um, in Estonia. Oh well, there is there's a company um, RNS.ID that came out, and they partnered with the Republic of uh, Palau which is an island in the Pacific off the coast of, well, it's in between um, Guam and like the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, it primarily speaks English, um, colonized uh, in World War II by America. Um, but anyway, putting that on the side, um, they built this dig digital residency program that's built out completely on chain. And the way it works, at least the benefits that you get currently are um, you can register an LLC, an E-Corp, um, or any sort of business 
um, with a virtual address in regards to your ID, your government ID that you get from the Republic of Palau. And the benefits to the, like, I guess the early adopters, we'll see how long it lasts, everything changes. Um, currently our 0% income tax on those things. So 0% business tax, 0% uh, income tax on your business endeavors, as long as it's registered um, with them. Uh, you can Is set up- are you, are you doing a are you doing an unsponsored ad on my show? Oh boy, no, no. All right, we'll, we'll cut it there. But uh, I do have what's your uh, what's your equity? <laughs> no, no. He said he I'm, bought I'm it broke. as a user, but it seems like he has some equity in it. A user yeah, does. No. My my equity is simply the money I threw in there to you know purchase it and test it out. So, um, what I use it for, of like all I use it for is just KYC instead of using my American. Uh, like my government ID from America, I use my Republic of Palau ID for KYC. Wow. So it's uh, it's quite interesting. And that's the only yeah, reason I bought it. And then I found out all yeah. the other things. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, but, I, I mean, that, that, you know, that would sort of take us into like a whole, I don't want to go through like yeah. a whole other rabbit hole because I know, you know, we want, we want to get to what we want to talk about on the show, but the, the you know, the idea of, of creating, you know, digital states and digital countries, um, mm -hmm. it's so absolutely fascinating to me, like, and it's totally doable and plausible because I think, yeah, I mean, I already think as the world as like a, you know the idea of of sort of borders and how from like one place to the other the laws might be completely different and how it's it's all um you know imposed by like mm -hmm. some group of people that decide that you can't go from this place to this place because yeah. there's some imaginary border uh it, you know it's, it's it's absolutely crazy and um you know and and again very, very deep discussion because there, there is a lot of what's happening right now with the whole kind of one world government. I'm not really a big fan of that because again, it's like a, a group of powerful people that are, that are trying to self-impose on the rest of us. And I'm very much like, you know, I don't believe that, that we can hundred percent self-govern, but I believe that we could get to some amount of that where communities could on some level self-govern. And I think that we've had that. Like, I mean, the history has shown that in some ways we have had that. But then history also shows that, you know, through like big, big, big areas of, you know, slavery that like humans can be like not <laughs> trusted with power. But maybe we're going to get there one day. But I think that where are we going with this, the idea of having digital states is, is totally mm -hmm. possible. And, and I would love to throw that on, on the show one day where we can like really, really, really go deep down the rabbit hole. And one of my books to read this year is actually, um, what's the title of the book, Gary? Is it the digital states or? The network state. Network state. Yeah. Yeah. Network state. I want to do a book club. Down. So if you guys are interested, let's yeah, do a book like club. Free too. Let's read it and let's do a live book club it. on YouTube. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> he really be lays it out. Club. Like he literally lays out the road of like, this is what you need. He has to a new, you know, he there. has a new podcast. <gasps> he has a network state podcast. His wow. first guest was Vitalik Buterin. Oh, oh I'm, wow. I'm totally. Yeah. Wait, we, who's that? Balaji. No, the guest. I mean, Vitalik. Uh, he uh, he did this like, <laughs> crypto thing. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I wanted I wanted to. Oh, share, he's one like, of those. I wanted to share this information that that I was reading earlier from Andrew, uh, given his update earlier this morning at the Fed and the OCC just setting what I was talking about earlier in the midst of a crypto, uh, massive crypto debanking operation. Uh, and according to Andrew's sources, what's going on is straight up draconian and aim to kill crypto. The Fed and the OCC are going after Morgan Stanley and Custodia Bank, which oh, is no. the it's the bank that's doing everything perfectly yeah. out of Wyoming uh, yep. by uh, Caitlin. Um, uh, Caitlin, um, oh, what is her last name? Uh, but you know, I digress. And and states that are are doing things really, really the right way for cryptocurrency, for users, mm -hmm. for businesses, in a way that that doesn't do rehypothecation. Uh, rehypothecation of like 
you know, loaning Bitcoin out and, you know, you yeah. having Bitcoin in the bank that, bank, that Bitcoin doesn't actually belong to you because it's loaned, been loaned out to six different other people. Uh, with the state of Wyoming is doing things the right way. Custodial banks doing things the right way. Uh, Fidelity, Morgan Stanley doing things the right way. But the Fed and the OCC are going after these organizations because they want to kill crypto, going after Paxos, going after others, telling them to withdraw their banking charter apt applications, telling them uh, no banking for you. The U.S. regulators saying that they're the captain still. Uh, VCs are becoming really concerned, uh, according to Andrew, with their portfolios, the mass, the banking. Um, you know, the, the OCC is said to produce a paper <clears throat> shortly so draconian a sizable portion of the OCC employees may actually depart their positions, right? Jeez. Uh, update coming out later uh, this evening from Andrew Coinbase has been actually told to wind down, to wind down, to shut down their crypto staking operations or the face fines and other more debilitating actions. This is a coordinated multi-agency action process coming down on places like uh, Coinbase, right? On places like Gemini and places like Kraken, all under SEC investigations, similar ultimatums. Um, yeah, man. There, Yeah, so, you know, kind of going to your questions, Julio. Uh, what's going on? You know, how, how decentralized are things? I would say decentralized af if you are if you know how to use web3 if you know how to use blockchain technology if you are a sovereign human being if you if you have freedom over your own mind over your own body over your own blockchain wallet over your own decisions if you give your keys to coinbase or kraken or gemini then uh then your situation is is not very decentralized and what this is going to teach people is that you need to become more de decentralized. And it, and then to answer your question, Julio, everything is going to get a lot more decentralized. They're going to fight it. They're not going to win. It, it, maybe they're going to fight it for two years. Maybe they're going to fight it for 20. But just like liquor, just like the war on drugs, you know, they're going to they're going to recognize that it's not a black and white situation. You can't just say this thing is illegal for everybody you have to recognize that people are free sovereign human beings that it's okay for us to have sensible limitations you know through whatever our society agrees that are the rules of the society but if those rules go beyond what the society says is you know reasonable and acceptable then you know people are going to fight it and if they make it illegal for everybody in america then it's just going to make everybody who breaks those laws richer. It's going to make everybody outside those laws richer. And then yeah. it's just going to create disparage, a disparageness, a disparity, a disparity between the people that are, you know, inside the old system without the access. And they're looking at the people outside the system with that access and uh, yeah, it's, it just it just creates a lot of volatility in people's psychology and, and their thinking and all that. So I don't know. In that in that period, if they do go about this way, are we growing because we're becoming more cent decentralized, or are we in a bear market where we're actually um, decreasing our sizes? Right, because. As it gets harder to buy, I'm, I'm imagining more people will just stay out, um, stay out of the market. And then us sovereign minds will find ways to continue going forward. Um, but, you know, will that be a bear market for growth and sets us back a couple more years? Um, that's what I'm worried about, because I, I definitely agree with you. Um but yeah, I mean, to a certain point, I've only known how to buy crypto through Coinbase, right? So, you know, if suddenly Coinbase disappears, what am I going to do? Am I going to call Gary and be like, hey, Gary, do you want some dollars? Like, send me some ETH? Like, what am, what am I going to resort to? 
there yeah. actually are stories way back in the days. I mean, pre, you know, so Gary and I got in in 2016. So, so, or, you know, pre, pre, pre that where the only way where you could buy Bitcoin is like you would go and meet strangers somewhere in some strange place and, uh, you know, give them cash. And then they would sort of do this transaction. And then you would have to trust that they actually are sending you Bitcoin. I mean, it was like as underground as it gets. And um, and I hundred percent agree with you. I think that the you know the bigger question is um, it's 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 a question of growth and it, it's a question of freedom, right? Like at what point is the growth, um, you know, being growing? sacrificed for freedom? Exactly. And I think that a lot of us who are you know building in a space and and just you know a lot of uh, I think humans right now the the biggest currency is freedom like i remember when i grew up i immigrated from poland and my parents were like you have to go to college like my dad literally was like he's like i don't care where you go to college you just need to get a college degree so you know me being like uh, uh, you know badass that i was i went to art college like who the hell needs to go to art college right great experience like super unnecessary student loans but like you know, I went to college and I graduated. Like, I was like, oh yeah, like you want me to, fine, I'll do the most ridiculous thing. You can, you know, the, the, the worst could have been like studying philosophy or something like that, right? Um, <laughs> but I went to college. And now what we tell our kids is that you don't have to go to college, but most important thing in life that you have is freedom. Because mm -hmm. this is what we have learned is that exchanging your freedom for money is, is 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 the path to slavery i mean i'm just gonna put it outright like not gonna sugarcoat it and as somebody that i have left corporate very long time ago i was in it for, for a long time and it, i was miserable for every second of it like my entire 20s and half of my 30s i spent in like corporate world and i hated every second of it like not for like there were moments where i was like oh this is like really cool i get to work with some really cool brands but most of the time i was like wow advertising is a sham and we're lying all the fucking time and uh you know we're working long hours and it's just like when you finally get freedom on a weekend you're so tired and exhausted and cranky that you you, you don't want to deal with anybody and anything and then like you dread mondays like literally on sunday you're anxious and then on friday you're like how many shots can i get how quickly because i'm free i mean when you think about it it is crazy like it is not how humans should live in no way shape or form but that's like what's and happening. for the wrong purpose yeah, simply so you can pay your bills. And oftentimes, sadly, it's like enough to like pay your bills or pay your mortgage and maybe put some money toward your retirement. And then by the time when you're ready to retire, like you've been, your system has been stressed for so many years that you literally like don't know anything else. And you, you like, you just die. Like you literally, like people are like, Oh, I'll do this and this when I retire. I think and you have a like, breakdown first. You have a bit, that's where a midlife crisis comes in because like a midlife crisis is essentially like recognizing that you spent all this time, like doing what you thought you were supposed to be doing and, and not any really any time doing what you wanted to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause people are never really living for themselves. Right. Cause they're always yeah. like making excuses. Cause they, they feel like they have to choose like, Oh, my, my kids or, or my dreams or my like life or my dreams. And, you know, and they, 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 you know, sometimes it's just a mental plasticity of like, you know, being able to, to like, you know, bend and do it all. But yeah, people are just living the rat race and, and they're just making these decisions and they're like, you know, going to this job and they're like going to this bar and they're hanging out with these friends and they're, they're, they're like stuck in these routines because they're, they're just, they have this story in their head. That that's what they should do yeah and they have never taken a, a second to say like who who am i what do i believe what do i want to do what's important yeah. to me what's my priority what is my legacy what do i want to live for what do i want to die for yeah you no know, and and uh you know and so if you don't ask you, yourself those questions if, you, if you're 40 years old and you haven't asked yourself those questions you're going to be in your forties and you're going to like flip out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. You're like, I'm getting a motorcycle 
and I'm going to travel the world and I'm quitting my job and like, you know, everybody's like, what the hell? But like, I know. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I was no. just going to say, I know I'm confused, but I, I can tell Luke is like even more confused than I am because <laughs> he's not even close to that. <laughs> To the to the midlife crisis thing or? yeah 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 but yeah. you guys know you guys know the cliche though you don't have to get like you don't have yeah. i think if you no but i quit life. my job like a couple months ago i've been in corporate america since yeah. i graduated college i've been an accountant work for big four firms like prestige like i just say the name people are like oh wow like but well like, when you say big four you practically do say the name so yeah <laughs> <laughs> A big yeah. four firm is, a, you say you're accounting in a big four firm, man. There's only so many, I mean, the big four, the big four. There's only yeah. four. Yeah. There's only four. Um, but yeah, like, and you talk any, about any the clients as well. Sheets? Huh? Are there any crypto on those sheets coming through? <laughs> I'm sorry. Not on theirs, but probably the clients. Uh, but, yeah. but um, yeah, I remember um, I used to work at EY and they were talking about the blockchain thing. I never got into it till I left, but anyways, not here and there. I face a third life crisis, if I call it, you know, in my thirties where I'm like, I need to quit. I tried, you know, I've been looking for a web three job for the past couple of months. And, and right now I'm just kind of like doing contract work just to mm -hmm. kind of stay afloat. But I like the contract because it's my business. It's, it's like, I can, yeah. I have the time, the freedom, and I can kind of think about what I want to do, but I feel like I, like I would either way, like I would have a third life crisis. I would have a midlife crisis because I feel like I'm always changing and adapting and evolving. And I'm like, oh, I like this thing more than I thought I would. Um, so there's no shame in that. I think everyone goes through that, um, you know, looking yeah, forward to mine. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and I think that like, I mean, like a, a part of life is to like always questioning, like, you know, where are my goals and where am I going and kind of like, what is my legacy? We went to, to Gary V and I, I don't have it. I have it written down somewhere. So I'm not, oh, puppy. <laughs> sorry. Puppy is very distracting. Sorry, um, sorry. No, I just like, you just want to squeeze it and kiss it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but one of the speakers was uh, Deepak Chopra and he said some amazing things. Um, and I wrote it down and he kind of said, okay, like this, this, you know, area of your life, you work on this and this area of your life, you kind of work on this and it totally made sense. And then kind of like when you, when you reach a certain point, I think he might've said like fifties or sixties, like, this is where you were, this is where you do your legacy work. Like, this is where it's like, what, what am I leaving behind? You know, what is my legacy? and and how do i consciously shift through those times so there's definitely a time in your life where you're like i'm educating myself i'm learning i'm growing and mm. then there's time of your life where you're like developing your career and then there's a time in your life like i talk about it all the time with um i'm involved with a lot of business networking organizations and i always say like depending where you are there's always a room for you because if you've been in business for 20 or 30 years like your biggest role is to mentor like if you if you don't step into the mentorship and mentor the all new business owners, then the whole local business economy is gonna die. Because the new people need mentorship. They need people that have been in business for a long time, had many mistakes, that can help them, you know, and in the same time, the new business owners come in and they have the ideas and motivation and drive that if you've been in business for 20 or 30 years, sometimes you that's, that's what you struggle with. Like you got the systems and you got the referrals and you're making the money, but it kind of feels like, eh, I've been doing this for a long time. And then you look at the young people and they're like bootstrapping it and they're so on fire. And I, like, I say it all the time. It's like as entrepreneurs, you are going to quit your job of working 40 hours a week for somebody else just so you can work like 100 hours a week for yourself and sometimes even make less money in that 100 hours but you're going to be happy as hell doing it because you're working for yourself and and i think that you know there's something very very amazing about that and i think for those of us who have children if we can kind of push our children into this place where it's like freedom is the most important commodity and, and and doing what you love is also really important and finding a place how you can marry those two without sacrificing one of the other completely you know it's like a balancing act i think that's how you find sweet 
you know, that sweet spot in living your life and enjoying your life and doing things that you feel are satisfying while also, ha- you know, like loving the life that you're living and not just like living your life for work, which I think a lot of people are doing. And that's just like heartbreaking. Super heartbreaking. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, you know, like some, yeah, some people, I think there's still a difference. Some people don't know what they're supposed to be doing with their life. But what, what's worse than that, there's something worse than that. Because that's, that's, that is one problem that people have is not knowing like, what did, what am I supposed to be doing with my life or how am I supposed to be doing the thing that, you know, maybe they do know what they're supposed to be doing and they just don't know how to do it. Right. Yeah. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't know how they're supposed to do. But what's worse than that are all these like men and women, all the, all these men who are doing what they think they're supposed to be doing. They're doing what they're told they're supposed to be doing. And then maybe they hook up with a girl and then they're like, and then maybe they have a kid and then they freak out and then they, you know, then they're like, I got to like, you know, you know, take care of this, you know, kid and take care of this, like make, raise a family. And they're always doing what they think they have to do. Mm-hmm. And they, and when they think they have to do it, they, they, they think about it one way. Yeah. You know, like, this is how I have to do it, you know? And they don't, they don't take, you know, they don't take the time to step back and think what, like, who am I? What do I believe? What is my passion? What do I want to do? And listen, man, if you got two kids, whatever you want to do, you can do that with two kids. You know, I'm sure you can think of an example where I'm wrong, but you know, if you, if, if, you know, it, I'm sure you can make it work no matter what, but you know, by and large, whatever it is you want to do, you can do that with kids. You can, you know, sometimes it's harder than other times, but what happens is that it's really easy for one day to turn into another day and for a couple of days to turn into a week. And for a few weeks to turn into some months and some years, it's really easy for people to look behind their themselves and their path. You know, if you're in your twenties, I'm sure you can reflect on your, your teens or your high school years or your college years. And if you're in your 30s, you can reflect on your 20s. And if you're in your, you know, so forth. And so if you're in your 30s, you can, ref- you know, if you're, you know, whatever. Um, and and it, it just builds up. And if and if you go, if you go, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 years without reflecting on who you are and what do you believe and what you should be doing with your life, and then you get to like 30 years and you get to 40 years, you know, like how many years are you going to go? closer to death so not ask yourself who are you and what do you believe and what are your passions and what are you willing to live and die for hence the middle life crisis yeah the whiskey's starting to talk i think if you don't reflect like 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 punch you in the face like you know if you just like kind of like buried it all this time like you reach a certain point and the life just goes bam you know and you're like oh okay I'm awake. Yeah, man. No, I got I got five kids, man. I'm in my <laughs> my kids know I don't give a fuck. My kids know. Yeah. Live your life, live your dreams, be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I you know, mm-hmm. like I, I make I make major life decisions with my kids. And That's uh awesome. yeah. So I, I feel I feel good. You know what I mean? Like every every day is a gift. Mm-hmm. I hope I live forever. There's a chance that won't happen. <laughs> hey, but, by that by then they might have totally cracked the whole thing. You just will like you know, oh. your body would die and like, I would just take your consciousness and like put in a new skin and you'll be like young and hot and it'll be perfect. Yeah. yeah. And in the meantime, you gotta, you gotta live, you gotta laugh, you gotta love, you gotta grow, you gotta build. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I can, I can get vulgar, but you gotta live, you gotta love. Sometimes you gotta destroy. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, I love yeah, this, honestly. Lots of good advice for sure. And things to like consider. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't get into, I guess my life too much, but I have, I have parents similar to at least how Ada or described hers. Um, like you got, like, it's a, it's a plan. You got to do this and that's what you stick to. And I, and I did that while like, well under the roof, respecting that. And, yeah. um, as soon as, as soon as I got away from that and got through college, 
it's like man this is a whole new ball game like i i found so much more enjoyment in the things that i'm doing um now from kind of not necessarily quitting what i was doing before but just making sure that i'm spending more time on the things that me myself i actually want to do and like i i do have a wife so bringing her and in, including in on those things has been honestly like so fun because she's very supportive and she loves doing those things now too and it, it gets better so yeah i love it makes all me that so sad when i hear some dude and he's talking about how he doesn't include his wife or his spouse or his like long time you know gf and it's like man dude it's like couples that out. Eat together yeah man this is so much better yeah. <laughs> yeah i i for a long time was was uh on a search and and we had like a, a when we were running show more i really wanted to like have like a couple's show i wanted like once a week to just get all the crypto couples together yeah. because it's like so cool to like meet them and i'm still like i'm still meeting them like i, mm -hmm. I just like found out about it you know a new mm -hmm. one and that i'm so excited because i'm gonna like i'm like you guys gotta yeah. come to the show because it i think it's just like it's so amazing because it's like i think that people come for like people come for the money i i, I think a lot of people oh, that yeah. enter the crypto space they're like oh you know there's this guy and he puts some money into doge and now he's driving this like amazing car and you, you know and i always say like don't fomo people in because they're gonna hate you and then you're gonna have a bunch of haters in the space like yes. you built doge when it was like nothing and then it like went through the roof and and we all know people like that or or whatever nft i mean there are people that like mm -hmm. you know minted like 100 apes and like yeah. now are like multi-millionaires i mean it's right but it's like don't tell people when like it's on the very top to be like oh now you have to buy in because they're gonna buy into fomo and it's like they're not only are they gonna not get the cool car but they're they're just they're, they're gonna hate it and they're gonna be yeah. like it's a scam and we don't want haters in this space like right that's why we always say not financial advice yes. like i like yeah like <coughs> maybe some of us were what here builders? really early Right. Some of us made some shitty decisions. I always say, if you haven't lost the millions along the way, like you just haven't fucking been in crypto. Oh because yeah. Because any decision, I mean, even like now, Gary's like, you know, if you like put two E's into this like thing that just like launched like a few weeks ago, like we would be millionaires. <laughs> so I'm like, just fucking yeah. don't even tell me, because nobody ever knows like what's gonna blow out. And every project that I see that blows out, when I see it on the beginning, I'm like, oh, this is shitty. Like nobody's gonna buy uh, yeah. it. And then I'm like, oh, motherfucker, it's 10 ETH. Like, are you kidding me? Are yeah. you seriously kidding uh, me? Like, what the hell? Like, how did mm -hmm. this happen? And so I've learned that it's like, you know, you just have to be like, there aren't any like ifs if I did this, because mm -hmm. if all of us, anybody that has been in the scene for any amount of time in the space, like, every day it happens like every single day there's like if i just spend this then i would have like literally had an island by now like, oh yeah right? i would have 10 islands yeah and i'm, I'm thinking know. of it in terms of school loans but yeah yeah 100 percent. we don't know but the thing is i think people come for money but mm -hmm. they stay for the revolution I think the people that stay, they really get the decentralization bug. They really get the freedom bug. They really start to understand. Like I always talk about it is because things are really interconnected. It's like once we start talking about self-sovereignty, right? And the, the, the right to own your own identity, right? And your own data and being responsible for those pieces. Um, it is very much like self-sufficiency. It, oh, yeah. it, you know, it, it, it goes hand in hand. It's like you have to be able to provide for yourself. And so that goes oh, into like the whole gamut of like, you know, where your food comes from and, and, and like what would happen if the apocalypse hit, right? Like, are you able and, and like what skill set do you have to like live in a world if this is yeah. if the civilization collapse? And many of us, I mean, I'm guilty of that, right? Like, I've tried to grow some vegetables and I realized that it is difficult as hell. Like I grew six tomatoes. Yeah, one if, summer. If, shit, if shit hit the fan, so you hard. Would be able to, the point, the point is that yeah. you, you, would, you would be able to, and a lot of like, be like being, being sovereign and 
man, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, we, we just scratched the surface because we're talking to a crypto audience. We're talking to crypto people and we're trying to tell them, hey, if you want to be sovereign, you have to have a crypto, like a hardware wallet and you have to know how to like protect the private keys and set it up and not share it. And, and, and you also have to know not to click on links because everyone's trying to scam you. But it, if you know all that, then you should also need to be knowing that if you want to be a sovereign Web3 crypto kid, you have to know how to grow your own food. You you have to know how to get water. You have to know like how to get food. You have to know how to like, you know, like just be able to actually be sovereign in, in every way possible because like part of Web3 and part of the digital revolution is about local communities. It's about being able to connect with people and being able to create individual local nodes of communities that can have security and you know economies and food and water and resources in a way that then can connect with other communities and that that involves communications that involves political science that involves basic like math and reading and um uh you know like communications theory you know of, of having those relationships and basically all web three does is that web three gives us like additional technology to make it happen mm -hmm. but it's really about the infrastructure of building networks and communities and and just web three is an additional layer of technology and so we're like tricking all the everybody in web three and everybody in crypto who's getting in for the money we're tricking everybody with crypto to say hey this is what self-sovereignty is this is what it means to be a human being this is what it means to connect with your ancestors. This is what it means to connect with the future. This is how you do it in a way that incorporates, you know, your flesh and your blood. You know, your like your beliefs and your faith with like technology and infrastructure and a globally connected society. And so like we, we we're, we're going to come to a divergence in path. And there's going to be a way where that happens in a centralized fashion by top down control. And there's going to be another path where that happens in a decentralized fashion with lots of individual nodes and communities that are coming together with, you know, individual strengths and weaknesses and connecting with like large, a larger network using open source technology. That might be the whiskey talking though. I don't know. <laughs> it is the rabbit hole whiskey and we have just gone down the rabbit hole. We really did. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> gonna have. To, I'm gonna have to connect to the to the rabbit hole whiskey people now and be like, so this happened, and I don't know what's <laughs> in your whiskey, but we went some places on the show <laughs> we were not expecting. Oh but man! I, I mean, that, you know, that's what I love these shows because it's just like we always end up having these like super deep conversations about like, you know, the nature of reality <laughs> that are like. Yeah, I mean, I love them. I, you know, and I feel like they're not being had in a lot of places. And 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 yes, like I, I want to go in all these other spaces, and I want to hear like people talk about the projects. I want to hear the people talk about the prices and the pumps and the dumps and all of that. Right? It's all really interesting. But I think it's so amazing to like get into these like deep conversations because, I mean, I think that you know when we looked at the very beginning, like Bitcoin was created, like the, the foundation of Bitcoin was in response to, you know, government literally like rock pulling its people like that. That's literally why the Bitcoin was created. And if you read the, you know, the white paper, like you understand it really was like a battle cry to be like, hey, we need these tools, and this technology, because like we need freedom and self-sovereignty with, you know, within ourselves. And even though it was, initially created for in you know around the fin financial system i i it, it from the beginning it was like so much more it created a foundation for us to create to go so much deeper and so i love having these conversations because like when people ask me like why i'm here like i always say like i am here for the revolution like i you know everything is great and um 
and yeah like i i i I, like i'm i'm definitely like the worst like you know flipper there is because i look at my portfolio and i'm like they're my babies they're like puppies i want to kiss them i want to love them and i want to build in all of them and they're not leaving (laughs) you know like i i just make me jealous what's going on here (laughs) I just see like a vision, you know, like I just want to build all these like amazing like companies and, and, and like, you know, you're definitely going to build whiskey women though. I am going to build whiskey women. I am hundred percent going to build whiskey women. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is like a no brainer. Yeah. Steve Miller isn't here tonight, but, but yeah, I was talking with him because he was, uh, I was uh, doing the shark tank for, I did the shark tank pitch for the first time. Yes, oh. I think yes, did yeah, I? Yeah, congrats. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were like looking at my portfolio, and he's like, "Whiskey women." I'm like, "You don't touch that one. That one is like not going anywhere." <laughs> and it's like, Why? He's like, "It's a that's great. Good one. It's a I forget what they call it when it's uh, two words that start with the same letter. It's some sort of term, but it just rolls. Oh. It's so it's nice. an iteration. Iteration. There iteration, you go. Thank you. Yeah, whiskey women. But yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man. With with everything that's going on uh why again like getting to the original like what what the very first point that i was making in a super beginning is that there is a lot of like fear and there's a lot of concerns happening in the like the global macro space like politics you know uh you know recession uh nuclear world war three you know like whatever pick your poison um and then there's concerns about how that's going to affect the crypto industry and so uh, a lot of people are freaking out. A lot of people are worried about their money. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like watching it like carefully, right? Like me, I'm watching the situation carefully myself. A lot of people are freaked out, but normal people are freaked out and they're not paying attention. Builders are building. And so with all, with all the building that's happening, what's happening now, the builders that are happening now and where no one's paying attention that's where there's a lot of magic happening. That's where a lot of fire is happening. When when people pivot and they start paying attention again, then you're going to like step in to see what all the builders built. And that's when you're going to realize that there's a lot more than meets the eye, right? And so there's the D website, D website spot. I mean, poor, poor Twitter and he's poor. I can't wait till we can use ENS names, the damn Twitter profiles, but there's the D website spot pluralized. And this is made by the E steroids. Etheroids. Te- Etheroids. Ether- 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 Gosh, I can never I've- remember this. Easteroids. There we go. That's how you say it. Easteroids. E S T Easteroids. Okay. It's like asteroids, but Easteroids. Easteroids. I hate it. So it's it's steroids with steroids. electronic aspect to it. So like e steroids. steroids. I hate it. I hate it. I just hate it. <laughs> it's I, hate it. I don't hate it. I think it's I hate it. Bitch. Listen, I think I'm it's a marketing catchy. guy, guys. I'm a marketing guy. I'm a marketing guy. I could tell you with like all the stuff I don't know about marketing. What I do know is that this name is horrible. But Why? It's a DGen website, so can, nobody, nobody can remember this. Nobody, yeah. unless you're looking at it, nobody can remember this. Nobody can find this. This has no meaning to everybody. Like, what does this have to do with steroids? <laughs> like, like what? Like electronic steroids? It's like, like people can't phonetically say this. People can't phonetically remember this. People can't yeah. phonetically spell this. Must I go on? It's like. Guys, I need a I need a I need a name that people are gonna remember that they can type in and find. I couldn't I couldn't even find this. I didn't even realize they were linking to themselves. I'm like, oh man, I want to show more than just the this new ENS IPFS spot. And I can't mm-hmm. remember like I like I was searching in Twitter, I forgot the underscore. It has an underscore. Do I gotta keep on going? This name is like horrible. Because what about what about the dot limo? Where does it send us? Oh man, they got, they got a site. It one. should show. It should show. Yeah, it's like a search engine. It's like a Google of of uh, 
you know, if like I could type something in here, like I should be able to type in Ada and it'll pull up Ada's new website. Oh, what? That's yeah, pretty like, cool. They're like a search engine and you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, I so, huh. so these are all the people, it's, you know, so like all these should have the word Ada in it. It's one way or another. I don't know yeah, how that actually comes. that's how I saw Ada. That's how I saw your website is because I saw the IPFS bot publish it when it went live. So I was like, oh, let me check into that. Oh, it doesn't look cool. like you. Yeah. Yep. I guess this is you. The the the, the, fa the facial ID matches. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a cool yeah. Oh, you're an artist too. Look at that. <laughs> I do make art. I'm a, I'm a yeah. jack. I'm I'm the jack of many many trades. Yeah. And yeah. the master of. None. <laughs> I didn't say. You said that. <laughs> Yeah, no, but, there, no, but there's a I've lot of people building in my life. So, um, just to this, to this person, e steroids. Um, don't get discouraged. Um, Gary has a lot of. I told him. I already talked to him. Because okay, they're... you talked to the. To, this guy's talked... your friend. Okay, listen. <laughs> yeah, well, Twitter's a small world. ENS is a small world. I feel okay. Yeah, small just world. don't get discouraged, man. Keep he building. Knows. You know. He knows. Screw Gary. Whatever. <laughs> you guys think I'm the only person saying this? He, he had a quad whiskey, so I did have a quad. <laughs> every every like everybody tells him, uh, yeah, th yeah, it's, it's hard to remember. They know it's hard to remember. I think I, I told them, I'm like, listen, I love the website. I talk about it all the time. You know, I don't do. Do they? I don't. They probably don't follow me. But uh, where are they? What about uh, like no. if he changed the yeah, name to yeah. ETH? steroids that's i better. i don't even know man or or add a freaking dot eth to your like the top name yeah, I, yeah i'm, I'm pretty sure something. this is yeah that's him that's him. yeah this, yeah. this is yeah uh uh e-all wrong e wrong yeah yeah no I've, t I've told him i've told him he knows i'm i'm i love this guy i think he's great we don't agree on everything but he's obviously awesome um yeah, yeah I, I've heard him. I've heard him on Spaces before, and I mean, so so this is the nostalgia part, and and you know, and I, I definitely scroll through that, and and look at like I always look at like what people are building, and being the early Web two adapter, I remember the nostalgia of. Like I was thinking recently, I don't know if it if it was like a question posed or if I was like putting together an article or a tweet or something but but like it's, it's always curious to me like how people get into certain things right so i'm always like how did you get into crypto like because the stories are really like amazing and fascinating and really varied for a lot of different people i got into, and, I got into crypto by making a website called X. <laughs> and but in the same time like if you Wait, what been here for web two then you have a story of how did you get into web two or what got you into web two and i always say oh it was like and i'm gonna totally age myself so i think i think both of you are like too young to even get it gary my kind of he's he's like a little younger than me but it was like playing mist and riven in college and back then it was micromedia flash now it's adobe flash but it was micromedia flash and Macromedia Flash was like, you know, Miss Riven were like some of these first games that weren't that, that like, the, you know, and now you look at the graphics and you're like, oh my God, like my kids will look at this and you're like, you play this? What the hell is this? But they were like the first immersive games that allow you to go into this fantasy world and really feel like you're fully immersed in this experience. And uh, Macromedia Flash was like the first website where you could literally... Like it wasn't just like black background and white text. And if you're not familiar with like what the, the early web to websites look like, do a do a search because it's hilarious. Like it, it it literally is like a time capsule. It like takes you back and you're like, what the hell? And it was the first time where you could create not just this like sort of poster board because that's really what they look like. But you could have this fully immersive experience of adding animations. And I feel like this is where we are right now with Web3. 
we're in this development stage of the websites where you can kind of create anything that you want. And so we're starting to see, I mean, some of the aesthetics totally reminds me of like the early, early, early dot com days, which is, you know, it's just like amazing. But the most, the most incredible thing is, is, is that I, I think we're missing the point. These are fully decentralized websites. Like it's not a part of like, they can be pulled down. Like, yes, maybe they're not perfect. These maybe guys are competing with VPN.eth. So you got VPN.eth, yeah. you have VPS.eth, VPS. virtual I private server. This is so cool. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, that is cool. <laughs> it's like the same website. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same owner. Probably not. I, uh, I, I, you know, I think, yeah, and we're going to definitely see that. Baller, see. whoever you are, I think you're cool. I got to check you out. VPS, that is, yeah. Yeah. Why does that not publicize? It's like, just like VPN. Yeah. That's so cool. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably VPN. saw VPN. They, they, they were like, I'm, no way, man. I'm going to get you. Yeah. Is there a way to find out who did it first? Uh, probably. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because this is listed this is January twenty seventh. Oh yeah, yeah. V VPN came first because VPN came last year. This is this just got posted January. Yeah. Because when they, when when uh, what, what's happening here? My understanding is that, is that the bot is scanning the blockchain. It, or the bot, the, no, not the bot, yeah, the bot is scanning the blockchain of the the ENS uh content field record and when somebody updates a content field record uh i think yeah. for the first time then uh this then tweets a screenshot of it so yeah. if you are working on a stealth website and you, and you don't want anybody to know about it as don't soon as you record. update your ens yeah the whole world will like someone will say yeah. so i'm just yeah. looking, for this, looking for cool websites so i was um I was uh, I put together this really really quick landing page for when I was doing the pitch at Shark Tank because I really wanted to pitch something that had a landing page on it, and you know I didn't have enough time and I didn't actually check the template that it wasn't mobile ready. And I mean we live in a world where it's like on Shark Tank, especially on Twitter, everybody's just gonna click the link right and open it in mobile, and it looked horrible. So I was like I scratched that. But I literally immediately after Shark Tank had to go in and delete all the records because I was like, oh my God, it's going to tweet it. It's going to be disaster. <laughs> it's not ready. And I'm I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I was like, I don't want the world to see it. Remind me, what was the word? Out of, I, I, I was there. I heard it. And I heard oh, Gary's pitch too. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. like, oh, these guys are pitching. Wow. <laughs> yeah. First time both. We well, had to get we had to get some experience pitching. Gary, I, I, you've been a shark before, right? No. Yeah, I've been no? on a shark. Oh, you yeah. were? Oh, okay. Never mind then. I oh, I took the website down. Mm -hmm. Wow. It is down. I'm just playing around. No, no, I, it went down. Yeah, I was. Are like, you uh, are you developing these too, Ada? Are you coding these things? Um, y y so, I so this. yeah, so I build the Ada that is with some help with from gary so basically i build like most everything and then there are like few pieces that i'm like i need you to like change some things for me and uh and that's kind of like where i go to him and uh it, it's interesting because when i started building website it was all dreamweaver and i did it the same thing split screen and it was so much faster to just go in and like type in the code because dreamweaver is great it just like gives you the whole thing so if you know exactly what you're looking for you're like add this and add this and add this and so it was a really really great build there and i always say like you know wordpress had made us lazy because wordpress just gives you a website and especially if you're building with like Elementor or any of those, like you don't ever have a need to go to a code. You just go in and you're like, I want this element and this element and this element and just plops it in. And the only time that that like we have to go to a code is if you actually have to do like a, a you know, a child theme and you have to like actually go into a style sheet, right? And change some things in a style sheet. But most of the time, like it made it made me forget a lot of the HTML code. So now I'm kind of back in a Dreamweaver and I'm like, oh, I have to like re-remember what it's like to hand code. It's been a very, very long time. 
even when I started in WordPress, it was really all about like, because it was early, early days of templates. It's you still would you just use one of their free templates and you would create a child theme and you would literally like hand code the whole thing to change it. And so my first days of WordPress was totally like coding everything. And that uh, it's been a very long time since I've like coded things. So it, 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 it was, it was a little rusty start, but it's a, you know, you just like, it's like riding a bicycle. You just remember quickly, but I am, I do have like a handful of projects that I want to develop on my own domains. Um, I pitched alter that ease and, um, you know, it's interesting because it can go so many different ways, but I always say like, there's a hole inside of the box, but I would love to, for, for someone, because it's such a clean brand and there really isn't anything even on a dot com. So if you really wanted to like corner the market and develop a clean brand around web three, I think that it would be perfect for doing like super rare collectibles. Like I have like a whole vision of what it could be. And I'm like, if anybody has the money and wants to buy it, I would develop it with you. Like I will part, I will go in, I will partner in with you. I would help you like build out the vision because like I have the whole vision is just, I think that there's only so much time that you have in your life to fully develop projects, you know, to really like, or build, you know, businesses, not just like mm -hmm. stop on a landing page and, and, that's something that I really was curious to talk about today, because as you guys know, you know, know I'm, I'm part of the CZC group as well. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm very curious because we're on that precipice where it used to be, it, it, you just purchase a domain name, but I think that the fabric of. That is um, the newest website to have published a dot ETH. <laughs> the fabric of like trading is changing. Oh yeah. And so now people, more and more people are thinking, Hey, I'm going to put up a landing page on it. So I'm very curious to hear thoughts of does do you think that changes the value of the domain name itself? Like, is this illegal for me to show you this website? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. Wow, how cool. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it how Gary always does things he's not supposed to, and then he's I like, know. I shouldn't be yeah. doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm asking the yeah. question. I'm asking yeah. the question. Hey. Like when he talks about the countries, and he's like, oh, I shouldn't be meshing those countries. <laughs> You know, that's yeah. the first time where we got like blacklisted from, uh, from, uh, a minting coins got blacklisted from YouTube because he just wouldn't like, and, and we just like went, you know, like there's certain things people you should love talk it. about. People love it. People love it that I, I, I say yeah. things that no one else wants to say. And I have a mental thing where I can't help it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get like totally demonetized. I mean, at this point, the channel has been like, you know, probably demonetized. Yeah, but like, that's, that's the whole thing. Like, now like, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right? Freedom, Ada. Freedom is more yeah. valuable than I money. I know. The, more, exactly. More so we're just you like, know, there we are. Julio, you know, you know, it's more value. You know, it's, it's like free, freedom is good, but you know, it's, you know, it's really more valuable than money. Integrity. Integrity is more valuable than money or freedom. Like, like integrity is the top of the pyramid. And, um, you know, it's like, we, we don't have any ICOs at minting coins. We don't have any NFT projects. We don't have any, like, mm -hmm. there's nothing we've rugged. And, and we just say whatever we want to say. And that's cost us sponsors. That's cost us this, that's cost us that. But when we do launch something someday and, and, you know, maybe we don't have the greatest reach cause we didn't do everything right. Whatever we launch is going to be fucking awesome and it's going to have the most integrity and it's going to be like, you know, pr probably something pretty well thought out. And uh, I, I hope everyone that's like ever like tuned in and had a chance because I, I feel like I've been pretty consistent. So I, I just part of me hopes that counts for something because I see all the people scamming people and like they yeah, they, they got to pay. They got to pay a million dollars, but they made like 20 million dollars. So big deal. You know what I mean? So. I hope it all works out for me in the long run, but if it doesn't work out for me, 
I'm okay with how I feel about that because I, I think I'm doing pretty well. And, um, and, and I'm, and the reason I'm doing well is because what's important to me is, is what I put first. So I, I hope, you know, and yeah, not everyone's going to live like that, man, but shit, I, I, I hope we can cultivate a community where we can get more people. This is what I want. I want more. I, I want two things. I want more people to live like that. And the second thing I want, I want more people to call out bullshit when they see it. And I want them to call it a bullshit in a way that has honesty and integrity so that men and women, but men can call out bullshit and we could be wrong about the bullshit that we call out. And it's okay that we were wrong because it's more important that we asked, Hey, is, is this, is this even kosher to begin with? And, uh, yeah, and I, I don't care, man. It's like I'm, like, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to scam people. Like, I don't know how to like say a bunch of bullshit. I don't know how to say what people want to hear. <laughs> we all know that part. I am not good at that. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be real with everybody and and just be myself. I've honestly like never ever ever seen Gary. Like, I mean, that's why I personally love him. But I've never ever ever seen him like person. tell bullshit. Like he, I don't think he's capable. And some, sometimes I'm like, you know, you just gotta like, because <laughs> it really, like, not it, it, it takes it. There's a small percentage of people that can like handle like the truth, like actually like what, you know, the like I always say like, you know, the whole concept of like radical honesty is incredible, right? But to be able to like be with somebody and tell them like everything that you think it's amazing and and i think that if you are that people and uh, that person and you have a commitment to like no i'm just gonna tell you like what i think <coughs> is incredible but yes you are gonna make a lot of enemies because we're so used to as humanity to have things like you know sugar-coated and like i always say that's why like i spent 10 years in the west coast and that's why i left because i was never a west coaster because it is so much fucking bullshit. Yeah, I was just like, can I just have some like, and I spent two, 10 years in New York City before where it's like, people just don't sugarcoat anything. There's just no time to sugarcoat. So it's like, you know, if you've connected with somebody, you know, if you didn't, like, you know, when in California, everybody's like, oh, we're best friends. This is excellent. I'll call you tomorrow. And you never hear from them. And then they're like, well, no, I was never like, like, yeah. like going to call you. And you're like, what the fuck dude like didn't you just say we're best friends for life like, I, I hate what? those pleasantries i hate it like i the whole kind of like california vibe where it's like yeah i love everyone i'm like i just want to punch you in the face if that makes me a bad person it probably does make me a bad person you know Pl plato or plato said honesty for the most part is less profitable than dishonesty mm that's so, a good one you know we we can see that it, there's a trend um, it 100 is 100 you know what is. that's not what plato said that's fake news plato's <laughs> fake news ancient philosophy fake <laughs> news <laughs> fake philosophy, <laughs> fake philosophy. <laughs> believe me i know philosophy <laughs> i call it i call it philosophy but it's spelled with an f <laughs> Not pH philosophy, oh it's FA falafel, falafel, falafel. Oh I, I call it falafel. See, this is why I'm like, we have to run an that's hour and a half so, show. So now I this mean, is the alcohol talk. Bless, bless Steve Miller, because like he's he wasn't able to make it here tonight, but he was going to be here tonight. And I was like, I was like, I promise you, like we're gonna get so much better at running like a tight hour and a half show. We did. We just went off the rails in the last it, half hour. It just, mm -hmm. Like it gets so good in the last half an hour that you're like, oh, the, the show just begun. We were doing pre-show, and now we're actually doing the show. But like you've had an hour and a half of drinking, now we're talking. Oh, you know, yeah. I see a lot of these crypto crypto folks, and they they have like four hour streams, ten hours, you know, eight ten hour streams, and like part part of me is like, 
Yeah, there's people that run like a daily one hour show, a daily two hour show. And then there, there's us and like, we're like, okay, let's do like a once a week, let's do a two hour fun show. We just get some whiskey and some friends and talk yeah. about ENS and Web3. But but I think, what is the time? Like, who cares? You know what I mean? It's just, if we're just in a room talking, creating content, like having fun, drinking whiskey, yeah, talking yeah. shit, like, you know, bringing up good, like, who, who cares if like, there's a hundred people or 10 people, yeah. or if it's like one hour or 10 hours, like, like the, the, the biggest fucking thing about these rooms and yeah, we can, we can wrap it up. But the biggest thing is about these rooms that, that I think is the, I most, say that. the most interesting is that this is like a public zoom meeting. It's like, we're having a zoom meeting. Yeah. hundred percent. We got a couple of people on the call. It's like, Hey guys, let's like, I want to have a zoom. I want to like video chat, talk about open C and I want to talk about this whole, uh, uh, seaport protocol. See what you guys got to say. And I want to talk about people building in Web3. Let, let's get together with, with, with like the first hour, second hour. You guys can drop off whatever. But and, and we're having this meeting and anybody can tap in. Tap that like button. Yeah. <laughs> tap it. Well, we, uh, I mean, Gently. Luke, Luke was the one that was like brought, up, brought on, like we brought you up during the holiday show, right? Like that was like totally impromptu because we were like, who is that person? And I didn't like, this is the, this is the, the, the always like the funny of, um, you know, the, the sort of like the Twitter and web three, right. It's like, you know, somebody by one name, but then their handle is different. And then they're just, yeah. and you're just like, who the hell am I looking for? Like, I can't tell you the amount of times, like, yeah. and, and I deal with a lot of writers for web three domains. And I'm always like, and sometimes they have a different writer name and I'm like, motherfucker, seriously, <laughs> like, how do I find you on that? that so I literally, yeah. I have like a writer name and a Twitter handle and an actual name. And I just like, we got a, we got a column. We got a column for discord name. We got a literally, column. I like, just oh hit gosh. find and I'm like, find, me, like, like, just find one name because everybody has like five different names. And it's like, it's, it's, it's so five hilarious. different names on 10 different platforms. It's killer. Yeah. A hundred percent. So we didn't know who you were here it really wasn't until you i think gave us your name and i went into dms and you popped up and i'm like oh wait i onboarded you and then i was like it's luck like it, it literally like you know because you had a different name oh here still yeah. that was like different than that any of the names that yeah. i had listed for Web that's domain. that's one thing i'm trying to fix <laughs> is yeah building that brand on one name i think it's is a lot hard. stronger and making sure i don't change that so like, I'm, I'm in the in between now on either sticking with this one that I got right here or just changing it to like literally the same name as my Twitter handle. So yeah, I you know uh, that's why like I when I when I entered the whole Twitter thing and I created my Twitter account long time ago and didn't really tweet much for like I had to kind of go in and scrub my Twitter of like all the early tweets. Because I've been here since like 2012, but I didn't tweet a lot. And what I tweeted was like had nothing to do with anything. So I was like, oh, I gotta scrub the whole thing if I'm gonna join the crypto Twitter. And uh, but I was like, I'm unfolded life. I'm not gonna do that bullshit. So it was all unfolded. It was unfolded life that eat. It was at unfolded life. Instagram is unfolded life. Like it was all unfolded life. And Gary's like, oh hey, like you should get out of that eat. And I'm like, no, we should not. I'm like, I'm not going to use it. It's a waste of time, a waste of money. It's bullshit. And he's like, no, really. So for longest time, I literally, I had like unfolded life. And then I had my number. And then out of that ETH was like way at the end. Like it was like, okay, fine. I'll fit it in if Twitter lets me. And over time, it kind of like made it to be like my name. Where now it's like out of that ETH is like who I am. But it literally went from like, okay, I'll hold it until like I can sell it to like now it's like, oh, it's just this shit is not going anywhere. Like now it's like one of my puppies that I want to hold and kiss and never want to go away. Like I'm like, did Cardano exist when you bought it? Um, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Cardano existed for a long time. And they had the na their native token already? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, Cardano native token came out. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of people thought that, like, a lot of people saw that she owned it, yeah. and, and they just like assumed that she bought it because of Cardano, and they were yeah, like, they, they were like, oh, it's your name. Yeah. And like, after, like it's like an it's after after effect. Yeah, that is. Yeah, like, it was my nickname. It's my full name is Adriana, but my nickname is Ada, and uh, and it was interesting because we have been here when the cardano launch when the cardano launched and it you know they they showed a lot of promise like we both you know bought into cardano and uh i still have like friends that are like super 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 in cardano and um you know i don't hate them personally i i the amazing piece about cardano is they still have a very engaged community which is amazing right if all this time you you manage to keep an engaged community i think and i think that this has happened to a lot of projects is that they over promised and under delivered because there isn't anything like we have one of our kids is um our 19 year old he's in college but he's also like learning solidity and all of that and he's just like he's like the documentation is shit like he's like there isn't anything for it so you literally have to go in and figure everything out and this is what i was saying about dreamweaver like i just start typing in and it finishes the code for me there's the the, the, the there's everything out the wazoo i just go to google and be like how do i do this how do i create columns how do i do this how do i do like you can find code for anything and I'm not, I wouldn't really necessarily call, call myself like a hardcore developer or anything. Like I'm a builder, but I'm not a developer. Like I cannot write stuff from scratch. I need a framework that I can then kind of play with. Um, like I can, like I always say, I'm like, I need a house and I can knock down some walls. But like, if I have an empty lot, like I do not know how to put up foundations and insulation and the roof and the plumbing, like that, that, you know, that's like developer shit, but that's where we are with web three. And I always tell him, I'm like, start a YouTube channel and, and like literally start creating documentation. It's going to be a huge hit because the, there's no documentation out there. Like if you create documentation for it, guess what? Everybody's going to be like, Oh, this is where the place you go, where you get documentation. That's so, so smart. Uh, that's right. So I I've been running into problems on my stuff and I can't find any documentation on it. So it's it's literally just been like a slow grind fixing like one problem a day as it arises and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So our kid our kid is a coder and he's trying to do web three development. Yeah. And uh it's so frustrating for him that there's like the, the documentation is so bad in web three. It's it's, it's terrible. Yeah. It truly is. And it's all it's like it's all either built on like um, of course, you got solidity, no documentation there really, other than just basic functions that already exist. And then you have a lot of which the solidity apps are built on, the dApps are built on with like React, JavaScript, that kind of stuff, which is which is out there. But then all the implementations of like Web3, JS, uh, uh, I think it's Wagami, Ethers, all that documentation is just like, you need to understand it from its core if you built it. Otherwise, yeah. it's so hard to actually understand it. it and then yeah. you then you're just picking away day by day, like, gosh, just dealing with this one problem. And then next thing you know, a day later, two days later, you you finally figure it out. And it was just one line of code, two lines of code. Hundred percent. And you're like, it wasn't documented. Are you serious? Like, yeah. Yeah. terrible. Yeah, I, I it, and and I I always like to highlight it that we are so early that we like haven't yet imagined like what web3 will become like we we haven't even like like we can throw a we lot are of ideas building together. what web3 will become we don't like we're building it right now but i always said like you know being that web2 kid that was like this is amazing and like, what can we do with it? And seeing the kind of progression from the, you would spend like all the time that you needed on the website to figure out like what clicked and what didn't click and where were the buttons and what spinned. And it was an experience. Like you, it was an immersive experience. And now it's like, you go to a website and it's like in, in two seconds, if you can't communicate what the website is about and to capture the person like they're gone like you literally the attention span is like this quick 
and uh you know and it's switch because it's like you go to games for that immersive experience and some of the games like i'm not a gamer in any way shape or form right now i am such a degen that i literally pulled my daughter out of school so she can like play the like dookie dash for me yeah it it was crazy garrison yeah i was like i'll pull you out two hours early because like i can't like even start the game like that's how much of a gamer i am not just 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 do whatever you can like just get some score for me like we're not playing for the key she did it in a very responsible way yeah 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 totally no i got her in like two hours early she was very happy but yeah like I, i'm like really like you're making me play a game like i'm not a gamer seriously <laughs> well with that being said our score is very very low but oh. we have a score we have a score so we're, we're fortunate but you guys end up getting for the score or did you have a tier what tier did oh you have? We're, we're we're um, less, less than less than hundred thousand. they're gonna etch it in the sewer pass you can go look us up later and then shame <laughs> Yeah. You could have played I, for us. Uh, you could have, you, you could have played for us. us. Yeah, you could have played for us, Luke, and crushed crush our score. If you wanted to like play for us, yeah, I, I had a I had a tier one score uh just around four hundred and fifty thousand with a tier one. And it still wasn't good enough, which is just oh, crazy. No. Like yeah. the equivalent the equivalent would be like another it'd be around like the six hundred thousand range if I had a tier four. Yeah. But still like there's some people like they were pulling literally like this gets me excited for Web3 Gaming is they were pulling people that have like professional income on these like professional gaming organizations yeah, and pulling them into this to play. The one, the person who's in first yeah. place is a professional gamer from the game Fortnite that came out. So he's, he's a kid. He's younger I than me. I didn't know he's, that. Wow. Yeah, he's like seven, 17, 18 and he's in first place right now. So it's crazy. It's nuts. So it like well, he, right he, now he, and forever he's right, in first place yeah, because the game I mean, is closed. over. The games are locked. The, the scores yeah, are locked. It's locked. It's yeah, locked it's today. done. And and most like, of the top players were all paid professionals. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, I mean, only like was it like out of thirty thousand possible passes, I think it was like twenty six thousand off memory that claimed. Some of them are going to get um, you know taken off and zeroed out because uh, they probably cheated. Yep. Yeah, like 25, 26,000 of these passes, yeah, in a small, small universe. Uh, side note for, you know, a few people out there, if you do purchase any of these passes, make sure they aren't at a zero. Because yeah. it's going to be well, really Oh, even then, even then, you shouldn't be able to purchase them, even if the score is higher, because the score is linked to the wallet. So if you purchase no, now. No, 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 really? no, no. Well, uh, oh. It, well, it kind of, no, it kind of, kind of depends. It. it kind of I, depends. I, yeah, you okay. got You got to look at the fine print. Actually, I, I don't. Okay. You might be right, but I just mm -hmm. want to put an asterisk there because you got to look at the fine print to see at what moment does the score get etched into the pass, the, the pass, the NFT, the pass NFT, because it might be that the moment that the game closes, that that, that it the the score is attached to the NFT. Um, yeah, so yeah, b basically <laughs> to, to, uh, for <laughs> someone in the audience, I don't want to say who, uh, to, <laughs> you're not, you're not too poor to understand this, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's just for people that have a pass and they're paying attention and they're in the yoga universe. The, we're way off topic. The yoga universe is like doing cool stuff. I'm I'm a bullish on yoga and bullish on V friends. Yeah. Bullish on anything, Gary V. Isn't like. that a Monday topic? Like, what's? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, we I, mean, it. I, got, I think we gotta like, close this down, guys. We're we're pivoting. It. I mean, whiskey Wednesdays is an everything topic. Is it? Yeah, I we like we you know we we definitely we ran like the Metaverse Monday and the Enos Tuesday. And then realize that it's very hard to run like a daily show where you have like kids and a family and you know run like a you know a big chunk of your evening and so you know we ran the experiment and it was great and it was fun and i think now we're like really zeroed in like, oh so we're now back to one we're back to like whiskey wednesday yeah okay yeah. great at yeah, least, yeah. And, and at least for at least for right now at least right now, the, yeah. the, the, the last year, the, the, the end of last year is about creating a show every day. 
to, to like work out the bugs and the technology, the people, the process, getting as many people on the show, as many topics as we could. How do we want to do this? And, uh, and then, yeah, like, right. Then, you know, like, I don't want to get into it. I had a really rough start to 2023. And at the same time, we, we were doing a live YouTube show every single day. It, it wasn't live, but we were, we were pre-producing a YouTube show every single day for a year. Oh yeah. And it literally took six to 12 hours a day to, to produce and, and cut and, uh, publish this YouTube show. And uh, we were doing it in a way that was really authentic and we weren't, we weren't making money from that show. And uh, because the show is sort of like, the show has a lot of reasons for existing, but the primary purpose of the Minting Coin show is not to make money. The primary purpose is to connect with people and to build authenticity. And the problem with connecting with people and building authenticity is that it, it's typically like not very profitable, right? Telling people inconvenient truths doesn't really build you friendships. Uh, <laughs> as anybody on Twitter knows, uh, that, knows that knows me knows, because I, I usually take the unpopular position on like almost everything. Uh, it seems it seems kind of intentional at many times, too. Many times. Hey, did you did you tune into the Shark Tank show? Last night? Yeah. Yeah, you did. I heard you. You pitched the hookah yeah, website. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so it, it was really interesting, right? Like, I don't know Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't follow me, right? I, I follow Jimmy because he's a fucking legend. But Jimmy doesn't feel Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't know me from this, right? And like he he looked at the Space Jam NFT. And the first thing out of his head was like, oh, they probably have a trademark. And he no went, way would I want it. that. And yeah. then he looked it up and he was like, hey, are you sure? And they're like, I looked it up. They have a trademark. Exactly. I definitely don't want it. Yeah. And every single shark or every single, like that shark, every single NFT degen in that room, you know, heard Jimmy. Listened. Like undeniable legend in the space that connected to name base, connected to Ave Stars, connected to V Friends. And he happens to have a hundred board apes. He yeah. consults with major projects you don't even know about. And he said like trademark issue and every, like, what, what, what is Jen going to say? They're going to be like, yeah, Gary talked like they thought about me. They didn't acknowledge it. They're like, yep. Gary wouldn't shut up about that. Jimmy just said that I'm just going to swallow my pride and pretend none of it ever happened. <laughs> Fuck you, Gary. <laughs> Jimmy's right. You know? It doesn't matter if it's everybody picking up Brantley and people saying, yes, we should, we should censor people on Web3. Or if it's the opposite, the complete fucking opposite side of the spectrum. And people saying we should have no, no centralization, 100% decentralization, and fuck the old system. Both extremes have negative externalities that hurt us at the core. And I hope that anyone that, you know... I think I don't give a fuck if nobody recognizes it, but I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back and I'm going to say, I'm proud of myself for who I am and what I believe in stepping up for sovereignty, stepping up for web three, stepping up for, you know, protecting people from walking themselves off a cliff. Yeah. But I know, man, it's not intentional. It's just the majority of the, the majority of the people usually have a, have a wrong opinion. Lucas is like trying to figure it out how to fight. Come on, Luke. You got it, Luke. Over here. <laughs> yo, fuck. Um, yo, and, and to answer Ada's question from two hours and a half ago, I do think <laughs> that adding a, a yeah, website to an ENS adds value to it. So just, it's a yes. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah it definitely like, helps we, solidify we, the vision. Yeah, can we get into that? Because, because you know, I was thinking <laughs> can about we get it. into like, it? We're like, <laughs> <and a half laughs> <hour ago. laughs> I'm like, so does it like you know? So some websites, right? Like Kukadari, 
let's just use hookah that eat curry food that right? it's i mean it's hookah right like it's very very hard to deviate because your brain is like hookah like i know what a hookah is it's the thing you smoke and you put tobacco in it and it's flavored and you hang out with your friends and Someday when we drink more whiskey, we'll tell you a story of how we like ended up in the Kupa <laughs> Lounge after a uh, looking for a bathroom in New York City during the NYC NFT. But that is like a whole other story than these small <laughs> whiskey. So more you know, so ape fast, but yeah. Is that is that a is that a yoga yeah. exclusive? No, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was a yuga exclusive experience i think it, I don't know. totally yeah, yeah. A, lot of, it was yeah. a lot of hookah smoking that right? i know pin us pin us for that because that was that was hilarious but you know it's very like your brain is like hookah i know what a hookah is and mm -hmm. it's very hard to de deviate from that because the, the there are things that are association you go to the website and this is what you're expecting to find and i think that there are other things like for example alter even though we all think like alter right like if if you especially if you come from a certain religious background like you know what the altar is but with the whole new age movement and all of that like you can really expand it into a lot of different things and so it it, it has more flexibility so my biggest question is because as i was saying like i had this vision for the altar of what i wanted to become but ultimately from like all of my like you know a basket of like puppies that I wanted to like love and squeeze and kiss and never give up there was I was like okay I'll pitch alter daddies and I'm willing to let it go if somebody if somebody wants to take it home and like raise it and have an awesome project out of it mm -hmm. um but but I was thinking I'm like so is it me is it, it's me showing a landing page that has a part of that vision right that says hey this is what's possible is it helpful is it helpful for people that are like i don't know visionless and they all of a sudden they go whoa this is a great idea i'm jumping on that train or does it take away from people that that maybe look at something that has nothing on it and it allows them to imagine what's possible that's that's like really is my question and mm -hmm. and so so that's kind of like almost like the one question the second question is like so in what way right does it raises the value is it because you have built in it is it that um you know it raises the value because it might be like for example zzc group is 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 has it are going to build the domains and it comes like it comes with a team so, so when you buy the domain, depending on which one you buy, like if you buy some of the premium ones, it actually comes to the access with the development team that would help you to do some pieces of it, right? Not maybe, you know, build a whole new thing, but, but I think they're, you know, they're going to get to that. And so, you know, so I'm curious, is it like the access to the team? Is it that some people are just it's helpful for them to see the vision and then they can take it and develop it? Or is it just showing people like, hey, this is so much more than just a username? <sighs> Those are my three questions. So it's not really not one, just two. I, I, I think it depends on the person trying to buy it. So like if we got a very smart developer that has a lot of experience developing websites, they might find little nitpicky things to pick at mm -hmm. the web page. But if it's somebody like um, like myself, right? I I, I kind of relate to what you were saying out of, of if you give me a house, maybe I could you know put stuff on the wall. Maybe I can knock one down. But if you give me a land plot, like make something for me, I'll be like, oh crap. So like, I mean, for me, I look at hookah.eth and and like, should I be <clears throat> like, should we make a disclosure that you know like you know, like. I would make money on that if we sell it. But anyways, you know, yeah, thanks for the thanks uh, for seven, highlighting. 7994 is a broker for hookah.e <laughs> through the ZZ group. Full um, disclosure. Just like yeah, full, full disclosure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like full, full disclosure. If anything sells in Web3, everybody else makes money. Somehow everybody is connected to everything in Web3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's your spoiler alert. Yeah, thanks for doing me the favor and putting that up on the on the live stream. Um, but yeah, like think about it. For me, seeing that, for me, I see value in that, obviously. But there might be somebody that has a team that does that or they can do it themselves. And they're like, oh, is this person going to charge me more ETH for something that I could do for cheaper? Mm -hmm. 
you know, mm -hmm. but those are, I think, the mi the minorities, right? Like, not many people will think that way. So I definitely think there's value added to it. And it could help, you know, people envision what it's going on with the page. And then maybe use that thing and then go to their guy and be like, hey, can you make this better? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely think it adds value. And it's just additional content in a place where we're still trying to get that mass adoption of seeing that type of content where... <laughs> There's basically, you know, a very few percent that we can see that way. So I think it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, I don't know what the others think. Yeah, real quick, I'll, I'll touch on that. I'm going to have to dip right after this. We got some family birthdays, so we're going to do some stuff. But what time um, zone are you? It's uh, 935 MCST. So That's a late birthday. It's a late yeah, birthday. Yeah, well, everybody's got to get home from work. So yeah, but uh, um. Yeah, I think I think building on the domain itself, uh, if you were to build a product that has functionality, I think that adds value to it. Mm -hmm. I think a landing page is I think it I think it adds to the vision and can help. I it's hard for me to see adding extra value to the domain with just a landing mm -hmm. page, personally. Um, probably that's coming because I'm a dev and I just know that, you know, if I want a landing page, I can build a landing page. You just do like, it, yeah. Like you're you not said. thinking like a marketer, Luke. You're not thinking like a marketer. <laughs> I'm, like I'm, I'm sorry. No, yeah, you, yeah, I gotta, I gotta yeah, stop that. But yeah, I do like see. You like, I yeah, can yeah. I do see the, I do see the vision because it, it does help if people are, if they're looking to buy, buy domains, and then they see, you know, I had a vision for Alter to be this way, and then they see the web page that's already loaded onto it. They're like, oh my gosh, that's such a better, like that's a much better idea, and it's a simple landing page, you know. Let that's me, that's me, the let value there. You, let, me, let me ask you a question, Luke, because you're going to leave, yeah. and so I'm not going to be able to. Do <laughs> and, and so I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give I'm going to give like a two part like 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 really quick answer with like my answer, but with, with your answer and not seeing the value necessarily of of what if hookah mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what if you went to hookah and and right away, not only did it look beautiful. What if you could go to hookah.eth and instantly buy an actual hookah or an actual sh sh mm -hmm. sh 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 shish? How do you say it? Or some sort of hookah accessory. Oh, what if you can go to hookah.eth right now and buy a hookah, ex hookah through Amazon or eBay? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the broker is listening, but what if you? What if they had a? What if they had like an affiliate thing where you didn't know That's it was an affiliate website? So I was going to get into that, but yeah. They had a yeah. five page website where you went to like, there's a hookah page and there's like a, a glass hookah page and there's like a, a something other hookah page. And each of those pages showed hookahs for sale on eBay with just those products. And now you think, oh yeah, I wasn't thinking that. That's a good idea. Oh, oh, I could buy this website. Oh, all I got to do is change the affiliate ID and it's me. And I instant, and then I just send traffic to it. And you mm -hmm. would instantly have money. You know, what if you have computer.eth, camera.eth, dogs.eth, you know what I mean? Or like dog accessories.eth. What if you got like whatever you got? You yeah, know, like yeah. I was so, talking about. I was talking to Ryan. I'm working on podcast. one billboard. I'm working on billboard. Yeah, but then you go to the website, right? What if you go to well, yeah. let, let, let's let's stick with this? What if you go to this hookah.eth mm -hmm. and someone builds a website and it's a shitty like you're a developer, I'm a developer in terms of like I'm an HTML developer. I'm not a real developer. I'm a fake developer. Okay, no, that's that's it's developer. It is whatever. <laughs> you can do a lot of cool things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If so, you know the CSS and the JavaScript behind it, the say, HTML is good. Say we make a CSS HTML yeah. website, and yep. it's like all it is is a theme forest theme. Yeah. And then we slap on an eBay code. Okay. But a normal yeah. per a normal person that doesn't know the most basic fucking code out true. there, which is HTML. True, a normal true. person that doesn't know a body tag from HTML tag. Yeah. They just like go to this website, right? Like this website, it looks kind of pretty. It says hookah.eth and it's like, has like, has like this hookah font for hookah lovers. And it's got mm. like, oh, I can, I can buy hookahs. I could buy sh shishish. I could buy hookah accessories. I can like, you know, like, oh, there's some listings on here. Maybe they paid for these listings. What if I could just click yeah. on and, and And now it's like a website that makes money. And now I'm, an influencer. I, yeah. I'm an influencer who likes hookahs. 
And and now I go, I like hookahs. Guys, check out my website, hookah.eth. I sell hookah shit because I talk about it all the time, right? Imagine an influencer, imagine cigars. If you're if like, you're like, maybe cigars is more tangible for you. Or maybe you could be like blunts.eth and someone's selling blunts. Or maybe it could be like computers, or maybe it could be like, I don't know, like whatever someone's into. Mm-hmm. Hey, Zero, I got a fucking great idea. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, so. Believe, believe it or not, um, I, I know I was looking through the D web websites and I've seen people already like already do this. And that's when I say you can have the landing page, but if you have some sort of product behind it, More, even if it's just yeah. a link, even if it's just a link, like you're talking about to another listing somewhere else, like that's perfectly fine. I call that a product already. Like, even if it's going to some web two site, you know, that's from just a development standpoint. Impact. Yeah, it, but, can be, yes. it can be a link to eBay, but the, the thing with these affiliate links is that they can be embedded like an iframe or yes. better, with JavaScript. Yep. Yeah. When you embed the links, like a normal user, like for, for you and is me- Is it iframes? Super, is that what it is in HTML? It, it could also, no, it could be JavaScript. So for oh, you- Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so like, I, iframe would be like super lame, but no, this is JavaScript. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for you and me, it's like, yeah, it's lame. You're just doing a, a eBay JavaScript or an Amazon JavaScript link for a particular category. Yeah. Before an end user, they they look at the URL, and the URL says hookah.eth.limo, and they're they're yeah. scrolling on the page, and it's like it it's all embedded, and they don't. It looks just mm-hmm. like this. It doesn't matter. It, it don't care. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't. that's awesome. I agree with that. That the adds a little value. I gotta go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I love it. You. Maybe yes. You see you next time. Yes. You. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. <laughs> somebody. Bye. Bye, Luke. Um, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think that majority of the people who visit website, and this is, this comes from somebody who like, wor- like I literally go and network with business owners all the time. And I, when I do my presentations about what I do as a digital marketer, I have to dumb it down to such a level, like such a level, because it, it's like, we never think of it, but like. People don't even understand, like we all speak in this code language that most of the people don't use. So like I say, like, you know, PPC and I'm like, I'm thinking everybody knows what the hell I'm talking about. Like, how can you not? But even if I say pay-per-click, people will be like, okay, I heard that term. And so we have this thing as humans where it's like, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about because I don't want to appear like dumb. But I've learned that like, most people don't know what the hell that is. Like it, it, it's a total marketing jargon that for most of Same the people, with meaningless. Yeah, Same if you say Bitcoin, Bitcoin they're like, everybody, oh, some weird shed. Like, I don't know what that is. Right, like every every grandma in this world knows the word Bitcoin. But, but nobody no, knows nobody, what it is. Yeah. Yeah, same with Web3, same with Metaverse. Like. You know, and, and because I think that when we go to like, like for, do, for, 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 for those of us who are bridge builders, I'm going to call bridge builders, the people who want to onboard the general public into it is if you're trying to build that bridge, like you realize like how much people actually don't know. And you have to literally strip all of the buzzwords that we use that we like if somebody that isn't part of Web3 got on crypto Twitter, they would be like, what the fucking fuck is this? What language is this? Like, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. You know, because we speak in such a jargon that sometimes like I look at it, I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, I don't even know because it like changes so quickly. And, you know, so so I think that that like, we have to have, and that's a challenging piece because we have to be able to talk about these very complex subjects in a way that's really, really approachable if we want to onboard more regular people or, you know, people that like aren't familiar with it and kind of like bring them into the space and, um, and kind of, you know, allow them to like find a way and be like, how do I find the projects? How do I vet the projects? Like, how do I know this is a rug pull? Like, you know, like, I, I mean, it really is like yeah. years and years and years of knowledge. Like I, it's like what, 2023, Gary and I got into the space 
five years ago. No, wait, uh, seven years ago, 2016, seven years. So I still holy shit. That yes. Makes that yeah, I'm gonna say it like anything else. Seven years ago. That was that just yesterday. Oh yeah. Seven crazy. years ago. And Life I started still, seven years ago. <laughs> I still literally look at projects and I'm like, this is fucking shit. And like two weeks later, sometimes it's I like still look at Ethereum like it's like, like seven dollars a coin. For the I remember when it was four bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when it was like four bucks. Those were the days. Yeah, it moved quick. You know that. Yeah. They, you know, we were, I mean, and we were like side side note. We were really lucky to have gotten like in back into crypto and we gotten into it because we learned about crypto in 2013, 2014. I, you know, I learned about crypto working in Silicon Valley, and uh, <clears throat> but I really didn't get into it until 2016. And like we fortunately got into it in 2016, and then we and then fortunately um, the ENS the original ENS launch was delayed from March 14th to May 4th, and then because of that, I got I got involved in the ENS in between March 14th and May 4th. Um. Yeah, because I think. Yeah, because otherwise, otherwise, we otherwise the world would be different. Yeah. Because, because otherwise, like we wouldn't have been involved when they launched, and then we wouldn't be in the position that that we're yeah. in. So yeah, maybe maybe somewhere in the future, someone went back in time and like time worked all that. But uh. Yeah, yeah I had that. I posed that question in like one of the shows. Like, if you could could go back, like, where would you go back to? And many people are like, oh, like you know, the beginning of the bitcoins when, when it was like you know cents. And I'm like, I wouldn't because I can guarantee, knowing from like the experience that we have had in early days, because like our Gary's actually right. Gary's pathway was to, like to Dogecoin that got like totally like rug pulled and you know through like some exchange right like we were so we were still in california yeah i'll, date, I'll, date, I'll date myself but yeah i no. mean i i, I had money that at was Crips, like... cripsy yeah cripsy yeah. was very very old if you know if you know that but um yeah listen guys it's like could have been driving the lambo i'm saying i love, I love, love talking about I love talking about that history <laughs> <clears throat> you know and i i just i just want to i mean as far as that goes you know <clears throat> It's, it's not enough to have single points of information you, you know or knowledge you you also need to have information because like what it what if you what if you can tell like your great grandparents something that would have not just changed your life but your grandparents lives and your parents lives yeah, you know like would you really go back to one year ago or would you go back to like you yeah. know before you were born you know and it's just yeah, I mean, you could just go to yesterday and know yesterday's lottery numbers. You know what I mean? And it's all the same. You know, you don't, yeah. you know, it's always like a bunch of what ifs that people play. 100%. But the what ifs don't matter unless you change your what's next. Yeah. You know, like what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. Like we all heard what if. Who's ever heard, you know, like, hey, what's your what's next? What's next? Very few people sometimes. But people need to like, bring it back this is like how we were talking about earlier about the midlife crisis nobody ever slows down to ask who who are you and what do you believe what do you want right like what do you want to live for and uh <clears throat> you know like pe people need to get into that because we're always reminiscing about what we missed out on but too, too, like, not often enough. Are we talking about what are we planning? What are we shooting for? What are we desiring? What do we want to build? Not just for us. Like, like we want what we want in the moment because we're in pain. But what do we want for our children? What do we want for our community? What do we want for, like, the people that come after us? And to gain that, it's not about, it's not just about where are we coming from, but it's more so about how are we coming together 
and where are we going with this you know this ball this this web three web that we're holding where are we going to go because a lot of people want to go a lot of different directions and the only direction is going to be the direction toward respect integrity empathy compassion you know and uh if if we're gonna get there we're gonna have to get there together and we could just keep on going down with with these sort of a, you know talks but i'm 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 really loving these shows yeah because it, it, they let us go deep you know this isn't like a, a half hour show or an no. hour show this is like a multi-hour show we can go deep talk about web3 talk about ens 7994 I'm talking too much. I'm trying, I'm trying to I, feel, I feel I'm special that I'm here today. You know? You should. It's only one show a week now. Yeah. No. I got an email about it, you know, like Twitter was down. Twitter was like, down. We need to we, wait, like we need to talk school. about how I got an email. Like how how did how did you get my email? <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk offline about that. Yeah. Julio's going to keep this show going another hour. I, I have Julio, do you want to go another hour? I have no, I, I'm good to go, but yeah. I would be back next Wednesday. Um, Excellent. Even I, if there's eight people on here. I will, I will definitely put you down. I loved having you on the show. We had such a busy week that every week, like, not every week, but, but like once we kind of like narrowed down to Wednesday, we're like, we actually have to like spend more time producing the show. And it's, it, you know, it's intense, like running multiple businesses and raising kids. And so today I was like, we have to get the guests together. And so it was the very last minute, but I'm actually going to work, start working on a guest list tomorrow for the next week's show. Because yeah. I, I really want to have more of a, like a, 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 I love where we go with these shows. Like I really don't want to take that away because I think it's an opportunity to really have these this very deep conversations about Web three and decentralization and freedom and and I think it's very important. And if we look back at these, um, like even five six years from now. And, and where we're going to be then, it's going to be so interesting to see this is the conversations that we were having. And so that's what I love YouTube, right? Because like Twitter space is like 30 days and you're out. Like it, those things, nobody ever listens to them. But YouTube, it's like it's a different audience. And not only that, like you can always go back. Like you can go back and see our track record from like the 2017 when we started the channel. Like it's, it's you can see what we've been talking about. And, and, and it's, it would be very interesting to pull some of Gary's videos from when he started talking about ENS, like back in, you know, 2017, when he was like, I didn't see him for days at a time, because it's like, the names would drop and it would be like, you know, four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, where's my husband? Like, what happened? I haven't seen him in three days. And he'd be like, yeah. you know, bunker down. Like <laughs> I'm literally up like three in the morning. She's like, probably yeah. like, 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 thinking like, what the <laughs> fuck he's like what the fucking fuck like you know like, who's he I, talking to? what's going yeah. on now she knew she knew i i mean like we've always been down this rabbit hole together right like now there's a lot of story there's a lot there's yeah. a lot of stories in web three I, the, the, the point is this there's a there's a lot of stories in web three a lot of people get into web three for the money but what it really comes down to is that you know we, we all want our basic needs met beyond our basic needs of like having like our kids getting taken care of and having food and like paying a rent beyond the basic needs. This is about creating community. This is about creating legacy. This is about connecting with people in your local community and your world community. And there's not a lot of people locally who are, who are down to talk about these topics. There's not a lot of people that understand what the F is going on. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, these conversations are like really interesting. We uh, tried to do as many of these as we could in 2022. Doing as many as we could in 2022, we learned a lot based off our knowledge from 2017. Yeah. Now we, it's kind of like exercising. Now we brought it back down to one a week. We're doing it slow and we're, we're perfecting our form. We're going to make sure that we're able to get one done correctly, you know, ahead of time. 
instead of you know waiting everything to the last minute you know yeah. so you have maybe an email before the day before a couple hours before you're like we're starting now are you jumping on the show <laughs> and and so that that's going to give us like a solid foundation yeah. to continue building these on top of you know these minting coin shows uh which are candid and based on connection and community you know which are, are being built with what we're doing at web3 domains which is being built at with with what we're doing at hyperwave marketing which is being built with what we're doing with our, our uh, you know, other endeavors, uh, endeavors that we can and can't talk about because there's, there's a lot of things that we can't talk about. Um, that's a part of our normal life. That's just like separate from, you know, the, the public life and separate from web three, but maybe web three adjacent and public life adjacent, you like, you know, and to get to the punchline in the, in the bear market, it's for me, you know, which I'm just like a, like a kid looking to connect with people and looking to build something in the bear market. It's really meaningful to connect with people like you seven, nine, nine, four, and to connect with you on Twitter and connect with you on YouTube and connect with you on the show and connect you with ZZ group and connect with you with ENS Latinos. And I'm, 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 I'm doing a lot wrong. I'm, I'm doing a lot that I'm actually not doing. There's a little bit that I'm doing with being an ENS delegate and trying to pay attention and like, you know, paying attention to who's like in the ENS small grants and throwing my little bit of delegation toward ENS Latinos or toward this project or that project. Um, yeah. And it's just like, yeah, man, the, these, the, this is a time and this is a place and these are the hands and these are the people. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're all figuring out together. Thank you for being here. You know, I relate a lot to you, Gary, because I understand a lot when you say these things that people don't want to hear. Um, and I think it's because we might have something similar where we hold ourselves to very extreme standards. And even if we're doing good, we want to do better. And if we think that we can do better, we're going to call ourselves out on it. And we're going to say, hey, I know I did these couple of good things, but, um, you know, I don't like to dwell on the good things because if not, you just stop getting better. Yeah. So you holding yourself that way and you think that people should know how you feel so that they can get better and you just spit it out. Um, and I tend to do that. Sometimes I got to catch myself and be like, hey, maybe that person doesn't want to hear it. But I relate a lot. So sometimes I'm 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 on I'm on the like, yo, like, okay, yeah, I know Gary's a little, you know, a little tough to handle, but you know, like he has some logic to what he's saying. Like, no, 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 but like mm. you know, so like people get very emotional with things and I yeah. try to be more pragmatic. Um, so yeah, so um yeah, but then sometimes, you know, I'm going to defend you and you're like just going in it. <laughs> but anyways. Neither here nor there. I, I, my DMs are up, man. Like, yeah, no, they're, they're the, you know, they're they're like, literally, pull out. They're literally the way. Pull out, Gary. Like poking the bee's nest. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, because I get like, they, right? I get notifications, and it's like, I'm like, why are you poking the bee? Just let it go, and he would just be like. Ah. I'm looking for a hobby. Once I find a hobby, okay. maybe maybe that'll like, it it's, it's yeah. Yeah. And I'm but like, I've. Totally opposite. I'm like, but you know, obviously, I have my channel, and I think in my peak, I was probably doing like three or four shows a week, and maybe a pre-recorded one. Um, so it was basically, you know, I know the how much time it consumes, yeah. and I can like the way you guys produce is is very professional. Um, from one content creator to another, you know, you guys are very professional, very um. Like you guys pre-planned and you guys sent emails and all these things. So, you know, really admire that. Keep it up. And, you know, looking forward to being here um, many more times because I definitely like um, getting together with people that are professionals in, in the craft and, and actually consider it. You know, even if you're not making money, you're so professional, you're setting up topics, you're setting up support to like evidence what you're talking about. So I know how, how long that takes. So, you know, wanted to give you props live because you know it, it it's very i i notice it personally so thanks man that all means a lot that really really does it means like everything and with that being said people gotta go it's late 
we're three hours into this. Oh, like yeah, a third man. of this should have been a, th- a third of this, like two thirds of this should have been like a private but it was only so show. Good. It gets so good. It's so Dude, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the member show are- I even finished my scotch. Okay. Yay! I know I had like two whiskeys, it's like empty, and I'm like, we'll not drink more. <laughs> yeah. Now you gotta you gotta save some for the next the, the next yeah. uh the, the next um candidate. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be ready from the beginning next time. But you know, we'll be here next week. All of us will be here. And then some, right? We'll see who shows up. It's always a mystery who we have on the show. And yeah, we'll we're, we're gonna be consistent. Other people can dip in and dip out and uh and we wanna give like again, we wanna give a platform to people that 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 we feel are showing up. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, and 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 this isn't like any formal shit. This is just us figuring shit out. So uh, I, I don't I don't care what people think, but if people have feedback, I, I do actually do care what people think. Unless you're an asshole, then I go back to not caring what you think. <laughs> um, so it's a del- it's a delicate balance. Like you want to be a nice guy until you don't want to. There's there's times you don't want to be a nice guy. But, you know they say nice guys finish last. Only the nice guys the only nice guys that finish last are the gut- nice guys that don't know when not to be a nice guy. Simple as that. So, with that being said, I hope you're a nice guy. And I also hope you don't take any bullshit. And I also hope that when you don't take bullshit, you don't take bullshit in a way that's very empathetic and compassionate. And you reject bullshit in a way that has a lot of integrity. Because, uh, you know, it's like th- this is all sovereign web three. This is all people figuring it out. And as lone as everybody is with their private keys and their private wallet and their, you know, and just like protecting the little bit that they have, this is all one big community. And we're all single little nodes on the network, but together we make one strong blockchain, right? Each of us is a finger and together we make this whole organism. And I'm Gary Palmer Jr. Oh shit. Like. People could probably find Ada. Where Ada, where can people find you? Ada Daddy Unfolded Life. Julio. Yeah. Find me on Twitter, 7994.eth. That's where I'm at. That.'s cool. 7994.eth. We're, we're, we got we got to make more managers out there where people can go to the app.ens.domains website or website similar. And people can do, we, I want to make, uh, that's a new thing. I want to make lookups more universal to make it so people can look up BNS names more universally. But I'm Gary Plummer, Jr.eth. You're you. I'm sure of that. And together, we're all minting coins.